What's up, guys? It's yo boy Omni Sensei back with a new Naruto What If series. Reborn in Naruto as a Bito Uchiha. Part 3. If you enjoy my content, consider subscribing to the channel. Like the video, share, and leave a comment. This really helps with the algorithm. Remember to check out the author of this fantastic fanfic. Link in the description. Also, I have set up a Patreon account, consider joining to support the channel, and for more exclusive content. With all that out of the way, let's get into it. Nagami sat on one of the rooftops of the building, pondering on things. Thinking about his chibi disciple. Maybe taking a Beto under my wing is the best decision I have ever made since choosing to be Tabarama's student. When he first got the news from Hiruzen about what was happening to Sakumo he was frustrated. Sakumo was younger than him, yet he had once served under Kagami and his Anbu team. And he was the son of the second Hokage, a senju at that. The man really lived up to the name of White Fang. Surviving the onslaught of two Jinchuriki that was just nuts. He knew himself, going up against one himself. Kagami always was confident in his strength, yet Sakumo might have surpassed him. That made him want to push himself more. To improve a part of him even wanted to fight him, to know who's better. Other the primal insects of Asenju and Uchiha. Sakumo really did do a lot for the village. Yet for all of that what did Sakumo receive? The village didn't do justice to him, not as a shinobi, not as the son of the second Hokage. He had to always live in the shadows, it was a good thing that Hiruzen announced his lineage to be revealed, it would bring back his fallen reputation. And Hiruzen might even be able to pass down the hat. He would be the first Hokage to not die and give away the position. Though Sakumo might not try to take the hat, and there was Danzo. His once old friend had changed very much. The influence he had because of the backing of the Shimura clan was enormous. And he wasn't using his influence to do the right thing. Both Hiruzen and Danzo could have no should have stopped the rumors from spreading. It's what he would have done if he was in their position. If they wanted to call Sakumo, it could have been done behind closed doors with Sakumo keeping his reputation and Hayuga getting their dues. Yet both of them did nothing. And again Abito did something. The little brat didn't sit around like the other Konoha elders. But then again Kagami's mentality changed quite a lot after seeing Abito that day in the hospital. Trying to save his close ones without sacrificing anything, having the will to protect so much that he awakened his Sharingan. You just can't fake those raw emotions. Maybe that's what Tabarama Sensei wanted to teach us. He did sacrifice himself to protect us, and we were just fools to look at the old way. He chuckled to himself, being taught by a five-year-old. Oh, how low has the Kagami of the Crow fallen? He mused. I should probably ramp up my training I don't want to fall behind. But why did Abito help Sakumo? Abito couldn't directly help Sakumo Haddock. But he did make Mimic clones to spread counters rumors that would save Sakumo's reputation. And his Mimic clones made valid points, he heard one of their conversations with other villagers. He was so confused feeling Abito's chakra from a civilian. But it didn't look like he was using the transformation jutsu when he looked at it with his Sharingan. But when he activated his Mangakyo Sharingan, he saw it. It was similar to when he himself used Mimic clones or Crow clones to be exact. The brat was doing the same thing with his bats. For Kagami, the Crow clone was a clone made out of crows with a trace of chakra in them. It was better at reserving chakra. As you don't have to split your chakra to make them, just a little bit. And it was much more durable in combat. The only downside is to his Crow clones, is that the clones couldn't use all the juts as the original can, as you only give a small amount of chakra to it. But the main advantage of the jutsu was the clones could be partially intangible. Kagami chuckled again. He saw me using that in the hospital, and he already figured it out with his bat summon. Or did the bats have this technique down he shrugged, he has never seen a bat summoner before, so it was new. But there was a certain question that bugged him. Why did Abito help Sakumo? He was glad he did. But why? Maybe he saw himself in Sakumo. Honestly, if that was the case Kagami wouldn't be much surprised. Abito sometimes could be a bit selfless sometimes he mused. Other times he is just a boy who's drool on his face with his Sharingan active. Abito had a weird thing around him, even though his parade to save Sakumo's reputation didn't help much. He did in fact help in saving that man. 
The only reason why Kagami and Kishina were in the land of whirlpools was because of him. There he could contact Jiraiya easily, who can look into things from there. Honestly, with how much the other elders wanted to call Sakumo if Kagami was a day late, things could have turned out for the worst. Maybe he was looking into things too much. Kagami laughed before he sighed. Abido did something that both of his friends didn't do. If Abido was guided the right way, maybe the clan was seeing an Achiha Hokage in the future. In fact, Hiruzen would be happy to give the seat and kill all enmities between the clan and the village. Hiruzen could retire if that happens the years of work aren't doing great for his family life. Asuma being always pissed at his missing father. But then again Kagami suspected Abido might have figured out what the Hiruzen and the clan were tiring to do. Abido didn't know what kind of misfortune Kagami was planning. But it might involve a lot of paperwork. He truly is a talented shinobi Kagami mumbled. Oh, who is Ajisen? A high-pitched voice brought Kagami out of his thoughts. And Kagami looked down, there it was his retired brother and his nephew Shisui. A good student of mine, little hatchling. Said Kagami as he jumped down from the roof of the building, patting little Shisui who was sitting above his brother's shoulder. His brother raised an eyebrow. You have another student. Kagami sweat dropped, you know big bro, you should really get out of the house sometimes, I'm sure Shisui would love seeing outside. His brother gave him a flat look, he's only one and a half. I was killing a boar back at that age, Kagami said, flexing his biceps. No, I was changing your diapers back then. His brother said flatly. Making Kagami look like a deflated balloon. Who's there, Dira blonde woman slid the door open, obviously a non achiha and saw the Achihas. Oh, it's Kagami-san. Why don't you join us for lunch? Kagami gave a thumbs up with sparkling white teeth, I will. Gladly. His brother just sighed, while his wife and son chuckled. The enemies of Konoha would never expect that one of their biggest fears could sometimes act like a child. Kagami also came here to take his brother and meet with the clan head. The info also needed to be shared, mainly if another shinobi war is to rise. Kakashi didn't know what to say right now he was very glad that his father's name was cleared. But at the same time, he felt a bit sad that people would still hold his mistake in front of his bigger achievements. The boy might be only five years old, but he wasn't simple. Even now, he was wearing a hoodie to hide his gravity-defining silver hair. His father didn't want him getting into any more trouble. After his mother had passed, his dad was the only family that was left. Yet every day, when he saw his father, he felt hopeless. Even Aki felt sad seeing his father like this. He hasn't been this down since his mother passed away. Maybe now that his name is cleared, he could be better. He hoped it would be better. Maybe I should buy some dango on my way back. That might cheer him up. Kakashi thought as he started to leave. Even though he was glad that his father's name was cleared. He was still complicated about the situation. Why didn't the Hokage clear him up sooner? Didn't he save his comrades? Was being a shinobi only about completing the mission? Or was there camaraderie in all of this? Several other questions ran through his head as he passed by the dango shop, buying some for him and his dad. Maybe they should eat out tonight, now that no one would dare to blame them, it should be alright. The moment he opened the door to his house he felt a sense of eeriness in the air. Something was wrong, this air felt heavy, it had a smell of iron mixed in it. Wait it couldn't be blood. Could it? A very bad image flashed in his mind no it couldn't be no refused to believe it. But the smell was coming from his father's room every step he took felt more heavier than before. As he slowly clicked the door open with shaky hands, one of them holding a kunai. It was dark, but his eyes adjusted quickly, and there he saw it. There were blood trails and a mop of white hair. And when Kakashi saw what it was, he sighed in relief Aki, didn't I tell you to not drag your prey inside the house? He said to the white-furred husky-like dog, that was almost as tall as him. Who was rolled up in a ball, sleeping. The dog looked at him flatly, I was going to offer it Sakumo, but he's not here. As if that explained why a deer carcass was middle of his father's room. How did he fit that thing through the wind wanna have some dango? Piss off, the dog said, before going back to sleep. Kakashi shook his head. Why didn't the dog like him? He shrugged. Akin liked him just fine. As he got out of the room, another person walked in through the door. It was his father. Oh, Kakashi you are here. He said, before frowning. Did Aki bring a deer back? Kakashi nodded. 
A bit jealous that his father's sense of smell was better than him. He smelt only blood, but his father smelt the dog and the deer. But seeing him not brooding, made him feel better. Tsukumo chuckled. And Kakashi felt relieved that all of this was over. Did you hear the news? Yes. Kakashi said, I always knew what you did was right, Aya Sakumo opened his mouth but closed it. He couldn't just say he was wrong when he himself believed that he made the right decision. Why don't we take a walk are they dango? Kakashi blinked before looking down at the bag that held the dango. Well, even better. Sakumo gave a smile, let's walk and eat. Kakashi nodded, taking one out, before giving the bag to his father. And he started following him, outside. They were starting to walk towards their training ground, a small plot of land that could be used for practice. I ah Kakashi I have to tell you something. Tsukumo said. The masked boy nodded, he knew that his father wanted to tell him something. But he wasn't so good at using words as he was using his sword. It's about did you know who your grandfather is? Tsukumo asked. Kakashi frowned, I uh, isn't he one of the martyrs of the first shinobi war? I never saw his picture why. Well Sakumo paused. My father was a powerful man in Kanoha. He was respected, feared, and even envied cause of his talents. That was why when I was born, I took my mother's name rather than my father Kakashi blinked, that was news to him. So what was my grandfather's name? He squinted his eyes, as his father tried to get the words out. Tabarama Tabarama Senju. Kakashi halted in his steps. He didn't expect that wait you don't mean the second Hokage Tabarama Senju. Sakumo chuckled, but nodded, yeah, that's him. I ah that's unexpected, Kakashi muttered. Wait, doesn't it mean I'm quarter Senju? Well uh, according to clan rules, you would be considered a full Senju. Sakumo said, it's only that if you are from the female side of the family, but yeah if you had a child with a non-Senju, he might be considered a half Senju. Sakumo said the last part mostly to himself, remembering the old clan rules. Kakashi didn't know what to say. He was a Senju. Senju Kakashi na Kakashi Haddock sounded much better, but Kakashi Haddock Senju did have a ring to it. But was his Senju inheritance why he had more chakra the rest of the children his own age? They were very much known for their huge chakra reserves. But why did his father tell him this now? He looked up at him with a questioning gaze. Sakumo sighed, I uh, didn't want to tell you this this soon. But the Hokage commanded it my lineage would be reviled to gain some of my- He sadly sighed at the last part. And it might cause problems for you. He blinked, uh wouldn't the villagers respect me more. Now that I am a Senju it feels odd calling myself that. Sakumo chucked, the Senju clan has been reduced in numbers and due to the war and intermarriage, and people who abandoned the name. So, yes, you would gain respect in Kanoha but Kakashi's eyes widened, won't the enemies target me more if they know about my Senju inheritance? Sakumo sadly nodded, crouching down to his son's level. I didn't want that until you became a Jonin. Kakashi paused at that, he knew what it meant. It meant cause he was powerless, a Jonin, with no power to change anything. He didn't like that. But it seems there's no other way. Kakashi wanted to know why the Senju clan or the recent generations started abandoning their clan names he had skimmed through most parts back when he was at the academy, but he wanted to know more. Why? Why do Senjus abandon their names? Tsukumo looked at his kid, he sighed, it started after my father Tabarama died, and after that in every war shinobi from other villages started to target the Senju clan because of fear. Fear that other powerful shinobis would come from the clan. And they were right to do so like for example Tsunade. She's actually your cousin if you know that anyway, afraid of being hunted down. Many Senjus when they sign up to be a ninja, started abandoning their name or even picking up names of other clans. You can say, in a way, the only reason why the average shinobi of Kanoha was stronger than other villages, was the cause of the Senju marrying outside the family. Sakumo said, but you will have to face a lot of enemies after I announce my roots Kakashi looked at his father's eyes, then train me train me so, I can fight my enemies. I'm not going to run away like cowards leaving my fallen comrades behind. Sakumo was taken aback by the sheer determination in his son's voice. His black eyes held determination. So, Sakumo nodded. It won't be easy. His father said. I know Kakashi said, with clenched fists. But I will have to do this if I want to stand firmly with my beliefs. His father smiled. That will of determination. Maybe he might have failed as a shinobi. 
but there might be something he can still do right a beat body flickered towards training ground 9, getting there in a few seconds. After training with Dai, his speed increased quite a lot, and there he saw Kashina sitting on one of the benches, just enjoying the wind. The red hair brushing the wind with creamy white skin sometimes he forgot that Yuzumakis were a rare beauty. Kill the thought Abito don't even get the idea of getting your dick wet, until you are at least cage level. He thought, but, I should look into the dating Yuzumakis with a bit more compass personality. Just for that, I should make a plan to save the Yuzumakis he internally chuckled. Sensing his presence Kashina turned around. Well, you didn't keep a girl waiting. Abito rolled his eyes. Please I had other things to do he said casually, but I have heard someone brought souvenirs. Wiggling his eyebrows. Kashina chuckled, Abito could be a kid sometimes, especially when it comes to ninjutsu and fuinjutsu. Well, I did. And she threw a pair of black gloves towards him. Abito caught those and looked at them, before blinking. It was just plain black gloves, so he activated his sharingan. And sure enough, he could see a plethora of seals on that piece of cloth. Some of them here recognized, the main seal was of Earth Attribute, with the addition of one Jutsu Matrix and another unknown Matrix written on it, Abito couldn't believe it he told Kashina about the idea before she had left, and now it was done. Whoever made this was pure genius. Wow Abito blurred out. And Kashina chuckled. Well, of course, you will be amazed. She grinned, you should have seen the person's face when I shared your idea with him, he started working non-stop to make it possible. The gloves are still an experiment, but it should be enough for what you are looking for Kashina said, wear them. She didn't have to tell him twice, Abito slipped them in and felt the seal matrix on his skin. He couldn't help himself and activated his sensory vision ability after much practice, he could activate without using the breathing. Though, when accompanied by breathing, it becomes easier to stay in that state. As the world turned black and white, he could see much more of the seal matrix, along with his activated Sharingan. The thing was just amazing. You can use it by before Kashina could finish her sentence, Abito had already stretched out his hand and activated one of the gloves. And saw the black glove gain a metallic shine on it it looked the same when he used armament. But Abito knew it was stronger than that. Wow Kashina shook her head, at least let me finish the explanation it's still experimental. But if it's done right it has a total of three matrices, the Earth one, the armament Jutsu one, and the Yang one. Abito was just amazed. So, how do you like it? You kidding it's da best. Abito cheered like a kid that got his new toys, and wore both gloves going through some light jabs and hooks of standard shadow boxing. Even going as far as to punch a tree and the effects were awesome. The Sheen amused. Oh, and with this, you should also gain some insight to Yang's sealing formulas. She hummed, you aren't qualified for yin and yang sealing formulas just yet, but I will throw you a bone just don't try to twinker it too much. Even I don't know if I can put it back if you mess it up. Abito rolled his eyes, come on I'm not a five-year-old. Kashina snorted. Anyhow, yang release is quite amazing the armament gloves feel like pure metal now wait, is that like metal release? Kashina shrugged, who knows take it from an Yuzumaki. Sometimes even we don't know what we make she chuckled, think of this as a kid's glove. Basically, Yang was the augment type, while Yin was the control type. Yang release by itself didn't have any jutsus like Yin release, except for medical ninjutsu. While Yin release is ninjutsu in its purest form, Yang was more of an augmenting skill, debatably medical ninjutsu kinda fell under it. Mainly Yin release is used with other nature releases to give shape to the jutsus, while Yang to increase its destructively. So even the basic fireball jutsu had some Yin and Yang in it. Both of these kinda overlap. So in theory, if someone could even add more Yang release in a jutsu and maintain it the effects could be very devastating. Like for example, when Abito went through clan archives he found mention of purple lightning, and it was theorized to have Yang release mixed in it which was proven false by Izuna Ichiha, Madara's late brother, who used purple lightning by infusing it with yin release, not yang. Yin to control, so Izuna controlled his lighting release to vibrate at a faster pace, and that's how purple lightning was created. More destructive and easy to control than blue lightning. You couldn't just slap yang release in all other nature types, and hope for it to work. Another example is Tsunade or Mido's yin seal. Abito straight up asked Kashina once. Why their seal, the strength of a hundred seal, was called Yin seal, even though the seal did everything that Yang did. 
She chuckled at the question, cause she asked the same question once. And answer to that was the chakra that they stored in their diamond-shaped seal was Pyryang release chakra, but to seal all of it in place and use it sparingly, they needed to put a yin seal over it. And that's why it's called the yin seal. Even though Yuzumakis knew quite a lot about yin and yang release due to using seals and their adamantium chains, still their knowledge didn't compare to what the bats have in for him. Yin and yang were two sides to a coin. One didn't or couldn't exist without the other. So Abido who had a very good yin affinity, also had yang in him. But it was raw and uncontrolled, unlike his yin release which listened to his commands to make illusions and cast jinjutsu. Abido wanted this glove to also train him in yang release, and to make him familiarized with mixing other elements with the yang release. But now he didn't need it that much, cause the bats had better ways to train both his yin and yang release. Still, he was awed someone could come up with these gloves just from the concept of it. Maybe he could ask the grumpy sealing expert in the bat clan to give it a hand and tweak it for him. Even though he had officially signed a contract with the bat summoning clan. Not all of them accepted him as their summoner, it was kinda given. Almost all of the bats were older than Abido. For the older bats like the grumpy sealing expert who didn't have a name, and even if she did, Nightwing didn't tell him, he kept silent on it he was just a five-year-old with talent. Nothing new. Bats unlike other summoning animals, weren't very combat-based. It was more of a support type summon. So even within the bat clan, there were different types of bats that focused on different things. You can think of them a better vision of the Aburum clan. There were messenger bats, fear bats, shadow bats, and there was one seal bat. Who was an expert in almost all aspect in sealing, yin and yang based sealing as well, and was even taught by the late bat sage, even though she can't use injutsu. She was a very powerful bat, you can even think of her as the boss summon. Even though there was no type of hierarchy in the bat clan. But they she was quite old and grumpy. Funnily enough, she stayed most of the time with Kashina, so that if something happened to the fox seal she could help her. And that's without her knowing meaning she was also very good at hiding from sensors spying was the bread and butter of the bat clan. There were other good hiding experts like the old bat, Nightwing was one of them. The old bat wasn't a problem, but if he could manage to get acknowledged by her, then it would help quite a lot. Shaking his head he looked at Kashina, who made this anyway. Oh, a simple bakery owner back in Yuzushi Agakur of course it would be. Abido chuckled, do you guys like Yuzfu and Jutsu for everything Kashina chuckled, oh, you have no idea. She said, but do you want some bread Abido blinked, wow, you eat anything other than ramen. Who are you? And what have you done with Kashina? Kashina rolled her eyes, unsealing a small scroll, and taking out two pieces of bread from it. Come on they are from my brother's shop which I wasn't supposed to say. She bit her tongue playfully, also that he's one of the head researchers for weapon-based sealing in the village. Abito rolled his eyes, what do you mean I didn't hear a thing, sensei? Like there were specialties in everything. Fuinjutsu had its own. Mido and Kashina were experts in barrier-based sealing. But there were other not so popular Fuinjutsu routes. Like weapon-based sealing. Now you might be wondering, why it would be unpopular. Well, for one it's only unpopular in the Yuzumaki village cause they have chains and mind's eye for anything and everything for combat. A skilled Yuzumaki could even put landmines during mid-battle with his or her chains, the chains could act as armor, and much more. So they don't need it. It's normal shinobis from Konoha and other villages wanted weapon-based sealing, and always kissed up to the Yuzumakis or attacked them to get that. That's why they make that sort of thing much and always frowned upon. But there were always exceptions Abido blinked, wait you have a brother, back in the village. He said, I thought you were an orphan like me. She chuckled, well, I am even though I didn't was from the main family in Yuzumaki. Me and my brother weren't off the shinobi line our parents were fuinjutsu experts. That's why my brother isn't the new head of the family. So for that and other reasons I'm here. Politics, he sighed. Well she nodded. But I'm not complaining it's just a bit alone sometimes and my brother didn't want the head of the family seat anyway. He's much more of a family guy type and would spend hours in the reading old ceiling records, then learn the arts of shinobi. Abido frowned, well, why doesn't your brother come in here to stay in Konoha? She sighed again, he's already married there, and his expertise in fuinjutsu is very much needed back in the village, that's why he's stuck there. Well I'm stuck here. Honestly, Abito felt bad for the poor girl. 
you should visit him more often than you crazy. Pashina chuckled, he's too much emotional it was a miracle that I got to leave the village. He might not be a shinobi, but as if you ingest to master, he has quirky ways to trap someone in a place. She said fondly, not hiding the fact that she missed him. Is that why you visited your home village? Ashina shook her head, as much as I like to go and visit for my only brother, it's very tough after becoming a Jinchiriki. The reason I went there is actually cause of this she said, pointing to her abdomen. Abito raised his eyebrow, as he started taking off his gloves. What do you mean? Well, the seal that Mido sent put on me blocks all access to the Biju's chakra. Making it impossible to communicate with it so, the seal needed to be tweaked. She said, and Mido-san is quite old and didn't want any risks, so she recommended the clan to do it for her. Mainly she also wanted me to visit the family as well, as she can't visit much cause of her age. Sure I do hate some of my family back in the clan, but I have many friends and close people there as well. Abido could relate to it. He didn't care for most of the Achihas, but there were some who he did care about. Oh that's good I guess. Abido said, before focusing on her with both his Sharingan and his sensory vision. And sure enough, there was a bit of dark thick crimson chakra mixing in with her red yang chakra. I do see the difference she nodded. But the girl seemed a bit down. Abido didn't want to but did something happen in the village. She shook her head. No, it's just I am worried about Yuzushi Agakur politics aside, it is my home they are quite far from Kanoha, and have been attacked in both wars. I have seen damage when some enemies crossed the wall, and it's heart-wrenching seeing so many graves and burned houses. Abido nodded, the war had ended almost two years ago. So things didn't fully repair. And of course, the Yuzumaki village was the main target for it all. I don't want to scare you or anything, but I also think that the Yuzumaki villages will be the next target if we get to another war. Abido said, your clan has broken abilities on the fly, all natural born sensor, huge chakra reserves, chakra chains, and even some have medical based keep Genkai. I mean that's not counting the fact that your clan is also the leading Fuinjutsu research in the shinobi world. Ashina deeply sighed, I know, and every time I point it out they ignore it many of the Yuzumakis that are of civilian ranks are leaving Yuzushi Agakur, and even from Kanoha. Because they felt scared that Kanoha will send them back to Yuzushi Agakur the moment war breaks out. It's just sad wait even though it's rare, there should be other Yuzumaki in the village. Ashina nodded, there are but they migrated when Senjus were still the Hokage, but now they don't feel safe with the Saratobi being the Hokage. She sighed, people are so missing trusting sometimes. Or you are too trusting. Here is in Saratopi is by far the worst of the Hokage. I wouldn't trust my cat with that man. He internally snorted. And that's not even mentioning his snake boy or Shimura boyfriend who loves to get keep Genkai children in his ranks. And shouldn't this also be a time when here is an allowed Danzo to experiment with the first Hokage's cells? Well, saving Yuzushi Agakur won't be easy. Abido didn't know why Hiruzen came forward and cleared Sakumo's name. But if he wanted to he could have stopped the misinformation at the start. Yet he didn't. He still didn't know what happened. But Kagami had something to do with saving Sakumo that's for sure. In the original series, there wasn't much mention of Kagami, except that he saved Danzo's life once. From where the Shimura started to greet over those eyes. Abido didn't know what to say. You know what next time when you visit the village take me with you. I also want to meet your so-called brother I'm like weapons more than barriers so, he's my type of guy. Sure, she shrugged. Honestly, he would be thrilled he also is a geek sometimes so, let's introduce ourselves a Jonin with a mop of spiky yellow hair said, my name is Minato Namikas. I don't have any particular dislikes, and I like training, gaining new skills and re-deeds Abito coughed, while Minato's face twitched a bit, but he tried to hide it from his other students. My dream is to be the next Hokage. He said. Now, let's start off with you he said, pointing at the girl in the three-man team. Oh uh my name is Rin Nahara. The girl said, um I like reading books, planting flowers, and training medical ninjutsu. I don't like lazying around, and my dream is to one day be like Lady Tsunade. Rin looked quite developed for a nine-year-old. Being a shinobi had its perks, and she had a more than a cute face with purple war paint on her cheeks. With her clear skin and dark brown eyes and shoulder-length hair, she was quite a looker. Minato nodded, before looking at his silver-haired student. My name is Kakashi Haddock. The boy said, 
I don't have any particular likes or dislikes, and I don't have any dreams either maybe get stronger with my blade. Kakashi's most distinguishing feature was his silver hair, which defied gravity. He had sharp eyes, and most of his face from his nose was covered with his mask that extended from his navy shinobi shirt. Minato smiled, and now we can start with some basic training, Abito cleared his throat before looking at his sensei. Minato sighed, fine you. Abito grinned, my name is Abito Ichiha. I don't like Dango that much, prefer Raymond better. I like to cook and fight strong opponents. I want to make my enemies tremble at my name and make beautiful Kinoichi's heart flutter at my sight. Abito winked at his female teammate who felt a blush rising up her cheeks. And I won't let them forget the name of Abito the ghost of Ichiha. And fight Madara Ichiha while I am at it Abito was wearing something similar clothes to the original series, but he had an added black cloak with orange lining, and a grey long sleeved. He was also wearing some dark mutated color gloves on his hands. With added shades over his eyes, he stood out from the rest. Both of the boy's teammates looked at him weirdly mostly cause of the last part. Rin even felt shy a bit. Abito was taller than Kakashi, and looked quite handsome with those shades on, and his mystery cloak. Abito and Kakashi was also very handsome for his age. She lucked out, didn't she? Kakashi finally asked, what's wrong with him? Minato waved his hand in a rhetorical manner, don't mind him he was dropped on the head as a kid. Abito just nodded considerably as if that explained all, making both his teammates sweat drop. And you will have to put up with him while you are on this team, he's not a hassle that much probably. Aha what the blondie said. Minato just sighed, why couldn't things be easier, he mostly mumbled to himself. Well both Kakashi and Rin knew Abito, that was back when they attended a year of academy together. And that was four years ago. So both Kakashi and Rin didn't know about him that much. Today we should start a bit of team training, but Minato smiled taking out four tickets to a Manka BBQ. I got these guys from a recent mission so let's get something to eat. I hope you didn't have any plans for lunch. Both Kakashi and Rin nodded, while Libido squinted his eyes. Okay then let's join again in lunch there, I have a bit of work to attend to, he tossed the passes to his students before disappearing. With that, the yellow flash of Kanoha was gone. Kakashi nodded, he had heard from his father about Minato Namikas. He is one of the most skilled jonin in the village. It was common for him to have low time his chain of thought was cut by his other teammates rambling. Abito clicked his tongue, that bastard left us for a date. Hearing that Kakashi almost slipped. Aerin said, looking as surprised as much pissed as Kakashi. Do you by chance know anything Minato sensei? Yeah, Abito said, he's a prick who doesn't want to share his Horatian formula. But then again, it wouldn't work for him anyway. That didn't mean, he wouldn't like it to look at it though. He's good at fighting, and coming up with weird strategies and too fucking smart I tell you. Both of his teammates looked at him weirdly. Abito looked at them, and grinned, raising one finger. But he's weak in the knees when it comes to a certain redeed. Wow you make complete sense. Kakashi snorted. He didn't like Ichihas and Hayugas that much after the incident four years back. The only reason why his father's reputation was ruined was party because of the wide-eyed bastard. And Ichihas were usually prideful, but he also didn't like Abito's aloof nature, not taking anything seriously. He didn't change much from the academy days. Why did the old man put him on this team he thought. He was going to take the Jonin exams not too later. But now he would have to humor them Kakashi internally sighed. Remember, when I asked your opinion. Abito gave the silver head a dirty look, yeah. Me neither. Rin didn't know why, but she could almost see sparks between their glares. Kakashi glared that could rival a predatory wolf. Just don't get in my way, Ichiha oh, am I hearing a challenge, Senju. He grinned, almost as if he's looking down on him. My ears don't work well with your kind. I mean you guys are endangered species. Kakashi's face twitched, how did he know that, but then again it was no secret after his father's lineage was revealed. Don't get in my way, Ichiha. He repeated. Whatcha gonna do about it, weak one? Abito grinned, a tad bit of seriousness in the air as he activating his dejutsu. His sharingan spinning lazily under his shades. Weakness of any kind completely revolts me, a weak senju disgusts me even more. Oh, you want to test that? Kakashi said glaring at him, right in the eyes. A mistake that Abito could have taken advantage of if Rin didn't get in between them. Hey, stop it. 
both of you. Rin said, we are a team now. We need to work together didn't you hear that Minato sensei will test our teamwork the next day. Abito demeanor completely changed to his playful one. Oh, but Rin Chan. We should cut off weak links before they grow on us, and I already have quite a bit of blackmailing material on Minato sensei if he, only weak people use tricks at Chiha of course, it was Kakashi. Hey, what are you a samurai Kakashi's face twisted yet again. Had a clan was a samurai clan, to begin with before migrating to Konoha, so he couldn't retort that. So the boy just clicked his tongue, just don't get in my way. With that, he was off with his body flicker. Abito mused at the boy. Same to you Senju. Seriously, Kakashi really was a prick when he was a kid. You'll just have to beat it out of him. Rin just sighed. What did she get herself into? Well, at least both of the boys were eye candy. So she couldn't complain much. The next day, your first task will be to get this bell from me. Minato said, tucking the bell in his side belt where one could easily take it. And you will be disqualified if I can tie you up with a ninja wire and you can't move. The task doesn't end until I say so, you can start early if you want or you have half a minute before it starts. Oh just so you have a better chance, come with the intent to kill and be prepared to lose a tooth or two, even broken bones the blonde gave a healthy smile, as if he didn't say something more. We do have medics in our team. Three of the shinobus body flickered away from the yellow flash. Hey, we should come up with a plan, Abito said as he looked at Minato from behind a tree. Minato sensei is a sensor, so it was foolish hiding from him. Rin nodded. We should but she stopped when Kakashi started walking forward, not trying to hide at all. Hey, we should stick together. Bakashi stayed still, if Sensei is a senior then there's no merit in hiding. I was thinking of ambushing him, but that's not going to work it seems so, I'm going to attack alone, there's a better chance that way. Field experiences as a Chunin and all Rin opened her mouth, but Kakashi did make sense. On paper both Rin and Abito were Genin. And he didn't know the Achiha that much to know what he was capable of. Oh, wow, an ego is a senju how very itchy have you. Abito mused. Don't overestimate yourself Kakashi Kakashi glared at Abito. The last thing I will do is listen to you Abito tried not to roll his eyes, you have your entire life to be a jerk. Why not take a day off and come up with a plan? Kakashi's glare just intensifies. Abito's face twitched a bit. Okay, no use being nice to him. Oh, did I hurt your feeling pretty boy? What you gonna do cry to your mommy Tabarama? Abito glared back at him. Kakashi's eyes twitch and he controls himself. You are like the other Ichihas, prideful and weak. Oh wow, I'm so offended. Abito rolled his eyes, say that after doing something other than boarding around like an emo kid. That Tabarama jeans are acting up a bit too much no every shinobi that had a bit of experience in the field, knew that the Ichiha didn't like the second Hokage that much. But Kakashi wasn't bothered by Abito or so he told himself. Whatever looser. Kakashi said, just don't get in my way. And with that, Kakashi body flickered away with great speed. Abito sighed. Rin looked at him with concern, what should we do? Well, follow the emo kid, of course. Abito said, at least that way I can save his sorry ass and stop him from getting disqualified. We don't want to lose the numbers advantage of course. Rin nodded, as they chased after their teammate who was already engaged with Minato. Kakashi ran towards Minato with great speed already going through hand signs, biting his fingers, he slammed his hand on the ground. With a burst of smoke, a wolf-like dog that was almost Kakashi's size was summoned. The beast was silver in color with black highlights in its fur. The dog was a head shorter than him, meaning it wasn't fully mature. Akito, let's do this, Kakashi said, not stopping down one bit. The dog was a bit confused, but it adhered to his partner's calling, following behind the haddock. Taking out his kunais and shuriken, and throwing them at Minato. Who stood in place and deflected it with his three-bladed kunai, curiously watching the chunin. Lightning chakra running through his legs, Kakashi moved with great speed with two kunais out engaging Minato in combat. His dog kept up with his speed attacking from the side. Minato side stepped a few of Kakashi's slashes, calculating the boy's speed, before parrying one of his attacks. The dog took the chance to attack from the side. While Kakashi tried to use this chance to get the bell from Minato. But Minato anticipated it, moving his hips back, kicking the dog in its chin, and throwing it farther away from the fight. 
Kakashi seeing his summon get manhandled, lost his focus for a second, and Minato used it as a chance to overpower him. Striking it at his shoulder, Kakashi felt his right shoulder get dislocated, the pain made his loose focus even more. That was when Minato dragged him by the arm, and he was spinning in air, before he was slammed into the ground knocking the air out of him. And he heard Minato taking out ninja wire, while holding him down. First one down, two to go fire style. Fireball jutsu. Both of them heard it and saw a large yellow fireball making its way toward them. Minato didn't stay there, he looked down before moving away while Kakashi was still on the floor. The young haddock was a bit terrified and angry at his stupid teammate's judgment. Kakashi wouldn't be able to make it out of the way of the fireball, even if he tried. So he planned to use his earth style to protect himself from that. Yet his shoulder burned, and fuck he couldn't form hand signs if one of his arms was dislocated was making signs with one arm even possible. Before he could think of anything else, Kakashi felt his legs getting grabbed by someone before he was dragged down with a jolt of speed. What the fuck Kakashi blurred out when he resurfaced in between Abito and Rin, further away from where he was just a moment ago. Rin, heal Kakashi Abito said, getting out of the ground as if he was a ghost, his Sharingan active under his shades. I'll hold him off for a while. Kakashi blinked, he didn't know what was happening. How did he come here so fast, but more importantly he saw Abito rush towards Minato, who was already engaged in combat with two other Abito's clones Kakashi, wanted to stop the real Abito from engaging in battle. But the boy was already off, and was making hand signs with one hand, creating wind sword using the base of a kunai, how was that even possible before slipped into the ground like a freaking ghost? What kind of jutsu was that multiple jutsu at once he didn't see any hand signs, for the ghost-like technique? It wasn't the hidden mole jutsu right? But was a variant of the jutsu that Abito learned when he 5, improving it with yin release. Kakashi couldn't do much either, as his shoulder was busted that was until he felt a hand on his shoulder. It was Rin. Abito rushed towards Minato with two aflamed kunais out in one hand, while the other hand went through four seals. After years of grinned out chakra control, he was finally able to learn how to do one-handed seal. Wind style. Vacuum blade taking a lung full of air, he blew the air onto the kunai one by one, as both of them gained a sword-like size. Wind chakra giving them a short sword-like appearance. With that he molded earth chakra with three portions of earth and one portion of yin. Earth style. Earth Ghost Technique one of the jutsus that he had learned first after coming to this world, and now it worked even better than the original. Minato on the other hand was going up against two of the bat clones who were engaging him in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Minato was specifically making notes to avoid each hit, as Abito or Abito's clones were using a jutsu called Armament to harden their skin black. If this was any other clone jutsu. Minato would have popped them by now, but every time he attacked the clones, it would burst into a swarm of bats before taking shape again. And not to mention the fact that they would try to put him in sound based jinjutsu when they were near his ears. And did he mention the fact that all of them had three Tomo Sharingan, and so he couldn't make eye contact as well it was a bit bothersome. He could deal with them in another way, but he wanted to give his student a chance. Honestly, if he wasn't a capable sensor and break himself of Jinjutsu immediately after sensing them, he would have been toast. Minato didn't want to make it hard on his team, so he wasn't spamming his Horatian no Jutsu. But that didn't mean, getting spammed by sound-based Jinjutsu every time he attacked the clones, he wasn't bothered by it. Just by the odd tactics, Minato knew Abito could give almost all Chunin run for their money, and even some low-level Jonins who were weak to Jinjutsu except for Jonin's in Achiha, Hayuga and Yuhi clan. Sensing the real Abito come toward him, he wanted to deal with the clones quickly. But then suddenly Abito went off radar from his senses. Minato frowned, that was unexpected, but then again Abito was trained by Kagami, who was a well-known sensor himself. And if Minato went sage mode he could figure out his location. Just as he was about to use his lightning style, Minato felt a chakra disruption beneath him and immediately jumped up, an odd noise, and it was another Abito with vacuum blades in each hand, coming out of the ground. A jutsu that was famous in the Shimura clan, but that wasn't important. Was it a real one? Most likely, he couldn't actually find out which is which due to odd clones that Abito made. Abito wanted to engage him at close range, so Minato humored his notion. While in air that took out five extra triple-bladed kunai throwing them in the field. 
He wouldn't use that jutsu that much, but Ibido didn't know that. First lesson in shinobi tactics, always keep your opponents guessing your next move. Minato said. With two kunais in each hand, Minato slammed down on the real Ibido, the clones engaging him from the side. Minato moved fast, ducking a black armament covered fist, while the other threw a wide kick. Making Minato step back, the real libido used this chance and moved his hand forward trying to grab the bell. And he almost grazed it. But Minato smiled, yellow lightning flickering around his body, discharging before Ibido could pull the bell off. Throwing all of three of Ibido back the Achiha clicked his tongue, almost got him unlike his clones, who were still recovering from the shock, due to original Ibido's cloak that was Fuinjutsu enhanced it was fire and lightning proof. So he could still go on. Yeah, not even close. But Minato didn't give any time for recovery and came dashing at the Achiha. Shit. Abido spat as the yellow flash attacked with his kunai, pushing the Achiha back with his kunai play. Minato internally praised Abido that he could keep up with his movements with his Sharingan. And even when he would find a blind spot, Abido would block it as if he saw it. Though he wasn't using his full speed to begin with, but it was praiseworthy nonetheless. Seeing a chance Abido grinned as he slashed forward, while Minato blocked it with his chakra-coated kunai. Ducking another slash. Minato rolled forward, while one of the clones that got up attacked, an overhead axe kick with armament to augment it, which the Namakas avoided, that almost left a crater in the ground. So he's strong and fast it's kinda scary what he will grow up to be. Minato internally thought as he avoided each of Abido's attacks. As a skilled sensor and good chakra control expert, he could match and even overpower Abido's strength, and that's not even considering what else he had, but no need to fight Slowpoke's head on. Hard to keep up. Minato mused as he ducked another slash, while narrowly avoiding another palm strike. Minato's sensing skill improved quite a lot after mastering Sage Mode, he became more accustomed to how chakra reacted. So he felt a bit guilty using it on Abido only a tiny bit. Ha why don't you look me in the eye and say that? Abido countered. Minato just snorted, while jumping up. Holding both of his kunai in yellow lightning chakra, he discharged it outwards, locking both of the clones in place. At the same time, the real Abido crossed his blades to parry Minato's strike. It seemed that Abido was struggling to keep up both of his vacuum blades up. That's when Minato noticed that Abido's kunais were custom, with a red outline at the edge. As a few Injutsu user, it piqued his interest in what those blades did. Oh, they aren't for show are they? Abido just gave a tough grin, not saying anything. Minato wanted the whole team to fight together as a team, Abido was good at least saving Kakashi and holding him off, while Rin healed him. But they still needed work. In the 3 vs 1, Minato was pretty impressed by the odd tactics that Abido and his clones performed. But it seemed that was all he could do, you are within the range of my jutsu Minato said, while yellow electricity started cracking out of his kunai. But Abido grinned widened, are you sure about that Minato frowned when he saw Abido get pushed down a bit more, while taking a breath full of air, at the same time he made a slight bend in how he gripped his kunai. All he saw was blue and heard was a roar that shook him. Suddenly flames burst out of the kunai, mixing with the air style vacuum blade turning blue. And at the same time, Abido screamed a solid burst of air. The combination of the already deadly wind-based sound and fire release, got the burst of air, creating a pillar of fire at short range, that hit like a cannon. Minato winched due to the sudden sound and was wide-eyed, immediately using his Horatian no jutsu to escape. He almost had sweat on his back, that was a dangerous one. His ears were still ringing the pillar of flames even charred any trees, and melted any rocks that were in its way. Minato looked back at his student who was clicking his tongue. But he could see a good portion of the Achiha's chakra was gone. It was a good thing that the boy wouldn't be able to use that type of jutsu in succession. But that was when he sensed something odd that he couldn't actually believe, within just 5 or 6 seconds all of the chakras that he lost were refilled. Ah fuck that was some inhumane chakra recovery. He had seen oddities carrying chakra more than Jinchuriki's, even though he had a huge chakra reserve, it wasn't that big compared to Uzumaki's. Maybe it would be in the future after getting more enlightenment in the sage arts or so the toad said. But it was his first time seeing someone recover chakra that inhumanly fast. Even giving one second to Abido would be a bad idea for his enemies. What kind of monster did Kagami-senpai raise? 
Almost had Yuapito grumbled as the flames in his odd kunais died down. There was a reason why he named the flamed kunai, he came up with this idea years ago. It was an advanced version of explosion kunai back then, but now he was creating freaking lightsabers out of fire and wind. The technique he used was a sound-based scream that was very deadly, and could be easily classified as Birank Ninjutsu, which he learned from the bats. There was an advanced version of it that had a more area of effect which was air ank, but he would bust his vocal cord using it. Even though sound release wasn't purely elemental, it was mostly made out of air release and yin release. And the cause of the weird nature of the chakra it combined pretty well with fire release, creating a pillar of fire. That had the speed of the wind, while the destructiveness of the fire, with the added benefit of busting eardrums if you aren't careful. Minato shook his head, his ear was still ringing, he didn't like the surprise attack. The only reason why his eardrums were not busted was the cause of a similar training that the toads trained him at, making his ears stronger. But it almost bugged him that a nine-year-old could push him to this extent. Now he kinda understood why the Hokage wanted him to train the Achiha. So it was time to get serious coding lightning chakra in his kunais he shot forward, Abito grinned and shot forward himself with his air vacuum blades, that were now normal. Bakashi was a bit irritated seeing Abito fight better than him against Minato. So when Rin fixed his shoulder, he came up with a small plan. Maybe Abito was right, they do need a plan, but he would never admit that. Akito, let's give our all. Kakashi said as he brushed his wolf-like dog's neck, and with a puff it disappeared, and in its place was a silver adamantium katana. Kakashi grabbed the sheath blade by its guard. Rin you know what to do the girl nodded, using body flicker to go to her position. Taking a breath full of air, Kakashi unsheathed his blade, the silver blade shining and crackling with lightning chakra. There was a particular clan of dogs that were similar to the monkey clan that Monkey King Anma ruled. They had the ability to transform their bodies to adamantium weapons. His father gained the nickname the White Fang because of his summon Aki. And Kakashi's summon Akito was also from the same clan. As lightning crackled around Kakashi he dashed forward towards Minato and Abito. A silver blur separated both Abito and Minato. And Abito was kinda awed at the speed that Kakashi was going Minato was also using his yellow lightning style to counter and parry the Haddock's attack. And Kakashi was pushing back Minato in a corner after a few attacks, Kakashi jumped back now Rin, water style. Water wave jutsu. A huge wave of water was controlled from the nearby lake and thrown upwards where Minato was. As Kakashi started falling back, he gathered lightning chakra into his blade, throwing it near Minato. Abito jumped near to Kakashi. You know even if your lightning mixed in with Rin's water release, it won't do much cause Minato is also a lightning user himself. That is if he doesn't use his stupid technique to escape. Oh, that really was good work of teamwork. It was none other than Minato who was standing on a tree a bit far from where the explosion occurred. Using the nearby lake to boost the water style very good Rin. Your control in water is quite amazing. On the other hand, Rin was panting due to the overuse of chakra. See what I mean Abito said, with a bit of frustration in his voice. You have a better idea. The Kashi clicked his tongue, as he made a single hand seal with both his hand, and with a puff his sword was summoned back to him. Abito didn't speak for a while, the gears in his head turning. Minato can use the long distance as an advantage. And he has a nasty lightning style, so close range is a bit too much for me to handle alone. He said, looking at the silver head, but with your counter lighting style, we might have a chance. Kakashi nodded. Rin felt a bit left behind. Honestly, why was Abito considered a genin was out of her mind. And it gave a blow to an already crumbling self-esteem. Both of them were so cool, and she Abito could kinda read someone's face when he had his Sharingan active, and he saw through it. Rin how good are you at throwing stuff Kakashi asked. Other than a tantrum of course. Abito grinned. Throwing as in kunais and shuriken okay, she took it back. Only Kakashi was cool, Abito was just annoying, but she didn't know why it fixed her mindset and made her grounded. Good enough I think the girl said, as she flickered near them. Rin Nanhara was from a minor clan related to the Siratobi, so she didn't have any clan jutsus. But she could use basic academy jutsus, body flicker, and some medium level water release, with the added benefit of working at the hospital for one year. All in all, there was a reason why she passed as the Kanoichi of the year and placed on this team. Good. Kakashi nodded. 
Making a few hand seals, Kakashi slammed them into the ground. With another poof, a pack of dogs was summoned. All of them varying in size. Hey, Kakashi what do you need our help for? One of them asked, it was a bit smaller than the rest. Is that Akito he looks nice as a sword. Pakin, guard Rin Minato sensei will most likely target our long range. As Kakashi gave instructions to his dogs, Minato waited. Abito was thinking about something else. Even though Kakashi was a bit of a prick to him he had was kinda better than he expected. Maybe having his father alive changed a few things he eyed the sword in Kakashi's hand. An adamantium weapon. And Abito, try to keep up with my speed, Kakashi said, making Abito laugh. Come on, send you don't underestimate me, now. The silver head rolled his eyes, whatever anyway, I'm going to go all out so time to wear my kid gloves. Abito mused, as he lightly tapped the downside of his left arm guard, summoning a set of black gloves. And he put them on, tilting forward slightly, pushing his shades up on his Sharingan eyes, so try to keep up gate of opening and healing open. After years of training like a maniac Abito could use the eight gates he could go up to four gates for now. But for this battle, opening two should be enough. Dai Sensei had prohibited pushing to the fifth gate unless he was ten another year. Also, he was right, the eight gates were a might family exclusive, but Dai Sensei trusted him and taught him how to use them. It's been a year since he started his training in the gates. And he could use four by now his talent in the gates wasn't that bad at all. But then again, it was the talent of hard work. Using all four gates not only exhausted him, but after the second gate, opening the third and fourth, also didn't let him use ninjutsu that much, mainly it prohibited his use of jinjutsu. Chakra was quite chaotic to handle after opening the third and fourth gates. So he still needed work there, but with time he would be able to use the all gates with his Sharingan. He just needed to grind. After years of hard work, his stamina was quite high maybe even Jonin level. Kagami did work him to the bones whenever he got out of the mission. It wasn't compared to any Yuzumaki, but he would cherish any progress. Now, be ready Kakashi I will try to make an opening. Try to grab the bell. Abito said. Kakashi frowned, the chakra around Abito seemed different. It seemed much more thicker Minato picked up on it as well. Abito gathered chakra like how he used to for body flicker, but at the same time he kicked off the ground ten times in a second. Bursting forward, almost blurred at both Kakashi and Minato. Let's dance, Blondie. That was even faster than Kakashi with his sword. How was that boy still a genin, again? No matter, he would just stack up more lightning to build up more speed. Akito let speed it up Minato being a great sensor jumped up to avoid Abito. But to his surprise, Abito changed his path midway and he started kicking off the air. Minato crossed both of his kunais forward, and a loud metallic sound was heard. With one hand Abito was pushing both of the kunais, while the other hand grew a metal rod that he used to attack Minato. Minato was wide-eyed, the gloves weren't normal, another few injutsu work of Abito. The yellow flash tilted sideways, pushing his side off, as he backflipped to the ground. But he didn't have time to rest as Kakashi was already on him with his silver lighting release. Minato ducked a sword strike while he countered Kakashi's lightning style with his own. But Abito was already on him. The Achiha had gained speed with whatever he did, and he was using the gloves to produce metallic rods to clash with Minato. Shit what kind of students were he teaching anyway? I will push my armament rods in you, Abito shouted, before correcting, on and on home away, of course. Minato got the answer, the quirky stupid kind. The yellow flash internally chuckled, he was kinda enjoying this. Minato smiled a bit both Abito and Kakashi were already Jonin level. Just by how both of them were good at their respective elemental release and fighting. Abito mid Jonin and Kakashi low Jonin based on fighting skills. Rin was a bit behind, maybe low Chunin level, but her water release was quite good. And with these monsters as her teammates, either she will fall off or she will gain strength her own way. Now he understood why the Hokage entrusted this team to him. He could easily take care of them if he used Sage mode he could have easily handled them, but he wanted to give them time to become a team. But that didn't mean he wouldn't use more speed even before Horatian he was quite the speed freak in Kanoha. And both of his students were speed stars themselves. So, why not show of a bit? As Minato speed up, Kakashi and Abito started to find it hard to keep up. But they kept at it, getting punched here and there. 
I thought you guys were supposed to be fast Minato teased, as Senju and Inuchiha teaming up to fighting poor old Mia civilian. Oh, how the clans have fallen. Both of the boys found it a bit annoying and pushed their speed more. A bit far Rin stood dumbfounded, seeing only flashes of silver, red and yellow. She pointed at it and looked down at the dog, while her other hand was had a few shurikens in them. How am I supposed to throw them when I can't even see them? Packin looked up at Rin, just don't it might cause friendly fire, while the other dogs nodded in agreement. Both Kakashi and Abito panted barely even able to stand, while Minato seemed like he had a light exercise. The teamwork of the two became more refined as the fight continued, giving Minato a bit of a challenge, which was akin to a jog for him. But that was quite a lot considering his strength was cage level. We were at this for two hours, how was the man still standing Kakashi grunted in between his breathing. Abito snorted, keeping up with an Yuzumaki are doing wonders for your time ain't it? Now now don't give up now the training doesn't end till I say so he said sweetly. Kakashi shot a dirty look at the Acheha. While well, Abito facipumed himself, me and my big mouth with that, the training continued. This insane amount of training went on till it was noon, by then both Kakashi and Abito were down. They could barely move their body anymore. Minato was quite impressed with himself. Of course, Kakashi and Abito were monsters, talented, and both of them got training from legendary shinobi from a very young age. What else did he expect? For him to make them look that pathetic he kinda found sick pleasure in that. But then again, he was also trained by the legendary Toad Sage. So Minato crouched over Abito's fallen figure. You in there, Mr. Ghost don't have any fuel left. He pocked the kid with a stick. What do you mean? The Achiha said, in between his breath, laying flat on the ground. Sharingan was deactivated, his shades hanging oddly in his face, his clothes having dirt all over them. I can do this all day. Abito barely looked at him. Going four hours of training without even a single break almost broke him. He had to count every second to recover his chakra in these years his chakra had increased quite a lot, but using those gloves cost quite a lot of chakra. But that didn't mean he wouldn't push himself further. Shut up Kakashi grunted near him, not looking any better, even his sword had transformed back to its dog from. And was knocked out cause of exhaustion. Oh, I think you broke them. Another voice said, it was none other than Kashina Yuzumaki. Minato smiled, seeing his wife. You sure pushed them far she seemed amused. Minato chuckled almost evilly, but he coughed seeing Rin near Kashina. At one point, he was so focused on fighting off the two boys, that he forgot that there was another shinobi on the team. Well, they are quite the stubborn brats, you're having quite the fun bullying kids Kashina shook her head. Anyway, is the training over? Minato looked at his student's sorry state and shrugged, yeah, it's over. Ah oh, Minato sensei can I help them? It was Rin who spoke. Minato nodded. Yeah, go ahead. We don't want them sore the next day. If it was training like how he did with Dai or even Kagami. He could have used medical ninjutsu on himself and removed his fatigue midway. But Minato didn't even let them catch a breath for four hours straight, let alone do that. He was glad that he was able to recover chakra in midway. But at the same time, Abito was also a bit surprised that Kakashi could keep up with him. And also a bit jealous at the same time, Kakashi's chakra pool was almost twice his. And he couldn't complain, Kakashi had skills to back it up he wasn't like him who could recover chakra at an inhumane rate, due to his breathing. And if given time, Abito would be able to recover his chakra and remove his fatigue in 10 minutes, and continue the battle. Whereas Kakashi couldn't so having a small chakra pool didn't bother him that much. He couldn't go on for infinity the stress would catch on, and there's so much ration bar one could eat before turning irrational. Having Sakumo alive changed a lot of things he hoped, everything was for the better. There's training the next day. Rin asked. Yes Kakashi groaned. While Libido just rolled his eyes, he was kinda used to it after training years with Might Die. Really? Kashina asked. Uh don't you need them ready for missions and stuff? Minato shrugged, letting do D rank cat errands would be a time waste. I would like all of them, even you rent to train for a while before they are sent directly to C rank missions. Practical experience would do them more good. Abito didn't say anything. Things changed again, it was always bound to. But if it doesn't change too much the first escort mission with Minato should be the same. D he would have to kill. He didn't want to admit it. After living here for so long. 
He believed that people were not just video game or anime characters. They were alive. And he would have to take lives well, no benefit in getting cold feet. I will just let my future self handle it. Abito internally chuckled, I'm all rooting for you. For now, I will just lie on this comfy floor. Nightwing and the other bat should be back before the mission. Having them should be helpful. Later in the day, Abito was outside of the walls of Kanoha, in the forest of death. Mainly he was in a cave his very own bat cave. He built this cave for the bats, it took whole two years doing that with his earth release alone. The bats wanted a home, and it was kind of their unofficial summoning realm for now. And what is a batman, without his cave? Also this way he would be able to use more bats and even summon them. There's so much bats that he could hide in his clothes and shadows. His cloak acted as a very good summoning device, along with protecting him from some damage. The number of bats had risen quite a lot. Most of the new bats were low level and didn't have many uses. And mostly were trying to enlarge the cave. Most of the new bats were just regular bats that were adopted into the clan. So they weren't anything special. But the numbers advantage helped a lot. Most of the new recruits would be used as cannon folders unless they proved themselves. Now that they had kind of a secure home, the elders in the bat clan were training the young bats to specialize in a certain task. Nightwing the first bat he saved, also had a specialization in spying, speed, sound, and fear toxin. In the world of Shinobi, a hidden secret or two could save your life. So he never used the fear-based poison of the bat clan near Konoha Shinobi. Bagami, Kishina, Dai no one knew about it unlike Jinjutsu which can be broken when someone was near a bat and was hit by a lethal dose of fear toxin. He would be in big trouble, even if he was medical nin. Cause in mid-battle even one second of losing focus could be deadly. Honestly, in these four years he had gone out of the village only twice, and both of the times Kagami and Kishina was with him, so he honestly didn't know how his enemies would react to his bat's fear toxin. When the bat started training him in their clan jutsus, Abito was randomly attacked by fear bats, and he had to build up a tolerance against it. He had the first-hand experience of how horrifying the gas was not gonna lie, he shat his pants a couple of times. So he felt kinda bad for his enemies, mainly those who would want to fight close range with him. Abito was actually sitting on his chair, white tables filled with ninja gear, gloves and other stuff that he was tweaking after fighting Minato. Abito gained two notable abilities from the Bat Clan. The Sonic Scream and how to produce fear toxins out of his own chakra. The first jutsu being a derivative of wind release with a mix of yang release in it. While the other was a non-elemental jutsu. Anyhow, the reason he was inside his bat cave was because of some of the flaws that he found out in his few Injutsu weapons. Some of the weapons were rarely used while others needed more tweaking. Fighting a speed star like Minato cleared out a lot of things. He didn't need to be flashy okay, not that flashy. What he needed was practically. As Abito was tweaking the seals on his gloves, he stopped and looked up. A few dozen bats came down in silence, forming his clone and it had a scroll in its hand. It's done already? He asked. Something came up didn't it the clone only nodded, throwing the scroll in towards him before scattering away. The scroll had a unique title, The Root Files, Report 46. This month's reports came in early. Abito said, that only meant the bats found something noteworthy. Bats being very good at hiding and spying, Abito had used them to sneak inside a few of Danzo and Arachimaru's laboratories, and steal their research. The bats were no joke when it came to hiding, they did hide from not one but two Yuzumaki Jinchurikas without getting found out. But even with how good they were at hiding, they still needed time and rooms and places that had high level summoning in them, needed to be hacked into manually by Abito. So it wasn't all that easy, when you consider some of the seals, if broken, could alert the roots, Danzo or even Orochimaru. But anyhow, he started reading the files. And he cited it was mostly about human experiments. It's disturbing that Hiruzen is allowing this kind of thing to happen behind his back. Abito thought as he read the research papers. Human trials, Kinjutsu research most of it was done on low-level bandits or thugs, but the trails on children bugged him quite a lot. Well, I can do nothing yet, but I will keep an eye on them, it's good that the bats can do a lot of spying work and not get caught. Even good sensors and Byakugan users are useless against their hiding skills, but then again, there are sealed rooms that they can't enter, and as far as I know. 
The bats didn't pick up any nature chakra from Orochimaru, so he's not training Senjutsu yet, it will be tough keeping an eye on him, after he learns that. After fully maturing his Sharingan with his unique breathing, he could see nature chakra in air, with his so-called glitch vision. Abido had experimented on Jiraiya with his bats, the toad sage was peeking in the woman's bathhouse then. And the moment one of his bats was in his range, Jiraiya caught onto their signature, and he had to reverse summon the bat before it got caught. And that was the only reason why the few rooms that had seals with Sinjutsu in it, like some of the Anbu quarters that were enhanced by Jiraiya's or Minato's sealing, Abido made a note to avoid them. But it was good that Jiraiya or Minato wasn't working with Danzo or the Roots, making it easier for Abido to send his bats to spy on them. Other than a few Uzumaki barriers and Senjutsu ceiling, Abido could pretty much bypass any security. The only bat he knew of that could avoid any and all detection was the old grumpy one. She didn't even stay in the cave, most of time around Kashina, without her knowing. Guarding the fox seal. And she wasn't going to help anytime soon. Nightwing's not back yet he mumbled, in the darkness of the caves, bats hanging about on the ceiling of the cave, as he read the reports on experiments Danzo and Arachimaru were doing. Honestly, after getting all of their research files doing any Keek Genkai research was easy for him. Of course, he was mostly trying to merge the DNA of Senju and Ichiha. Why experiment on low-level clans, when you could get the golden stuff? Medical Nin with sealing arts was a good way for that but he wasn't going to get any further without human trails. It made his stomach twist a bit that he would need to do this stuff, but the researcher and shinobi in him said otherwise. Hmm, I shouldn't only focus on the two clans either if there is no Atsutsuki in this world, the Kagaya clan, Yuki clan, Stone's unnamed explosion clan all of them are quite useful if they can be evolved to the next step like the Sharingan. Abito thought. Another of his pet projects was to find out why some bloodlines evolved or mutated. He had sent Nightwing away a few months ago, to the Valley of Hell in the Land of Hot Water. Odd name for a place, but he wanted someone with good spying skills sent there to keep an eye on the Chinook clan. Abido had searched the Achiha clan archives and got very little info on them. Madara's father was the one who had forced the Chinook clan to take shelter in the harsh environment of Valley of Hell. Something to do with Land of Lightning Daimyo and politics. Anyhow the other Red Eyeball clan, Kitsuryagan was quite powerful. Being able to cast powerful Jinjutsu like the Sharingan and control iron and blood. In theory, you could even learn Magnet Release as that was related to iron. Magnet Release wasn't fully inherent as one could learn it like the third Kazakiage. There were even some theories that Ranmaru's Kekei Genkai was the Kitsuryagan as well, but the Anime changed things from the novel. All in all quite the powerful eye. And what did they do with it, become a passive clan, and later get killed by Itachi 2.0 or for other whatever reason? Abido purely sent a few of his best bats to go there and collect data on that clan. He wanted a few strongholds in the Naruto world. Not by accident, like how people will fall on their knees and beg them to be their leader. No, he wanted a few strongholds with powerful shinobus under him, so that he could do stuff later on. To have freedom and power to change things. Abido wanted to influence, and there was no way they would let an Ichiha be the Hokage right now. Neither did he want to Itachi or even Shishui could have it. Abido had quite a lot of plans, some didn't involve Konoha. After all, with Madara still being alive, it would do him better to be careful. He didn't know if the old man would kick the bucket or not, like the original. I also want a pair of Byakugan to experiment with their abilities myself, but I can't just walk up to my neighbors and ask them for a pair can I?" He mused. The Achiha clan had Hayuga and Akamichi clans as their neighbors, why cause Tabarama wanted to keep an eye on them by one, and overpower them by the other, if they got any funny ideas. Smart man, but a dead man. He shrugged. And it's quite funny as Kakashi is Tabarama's grandson. In the original series, many people came up with theories on the basis of white hair. Cause of the hair color, many believed that either Jirei or Sakuma was Tabarama's love child. But one came to be true here. Nothing like this happened in the original, it just goes to show how different this world was. But then again Abito was a quarter senju himself. There wasn't anything about that in the series. And along with that, he had also been able to meet the famous Yuzumaki Mido. Granny Mai was the one who arranged that meeting, and Kusina was there as well. Even though he was in Achiha, he did gain some Yuzumaki scrolls due to his Senju League. And for that, he was thankful to Mido. 
and she was also the reason why he had visited Yuzushi Agakur back then. Anyhow one of the Yuzumaki seals that Mido gave him was the 8 trigram seal. And that gave him a lot of ideas into advanced levels of sealing. Also, my research in non-living sealing arts isn't going anywhere, so even taking the Byakugan or other eyeballs, won't help much. Abito thought. After learning quite a lot about sealing arts from Kashina, Abito had an idea. He wanted to seal other eyeballs into his Sharingan. Same way as tailed beasts that are sealed into human hosts. That way, his original Sharingan will be the Jinchuriki of other eyeballs. But it's not easy as putting the four symbol sealer the eight seals that were specifically made for living creatures to be sealed. Sealing living things in a living vessel is easy. While well, sealing non-living things in a living vessel is quite hard. And when he looked into Ichiha clan archives, it was quite odd that suddenly the Yuzumaki clan pooped up from the Senju clan. Having more vitality than the Senju chakra chains that if you get entangled in your dead dry of chakra, mind's eye, and medical kekajenkai. Such powerful abilities popped up from a brunch of Senju, gave quite the shock to Ichiha that were enemies of the Senju. Many theories were made, and Abito liked one of them. That's where he came up with the idea. As he was reading the root files, and when reading between the lines a named clan caught his eye. He blinked a few times, before face palming himself. How can I forget that clan? It was the Aburi clan. From the report, Roots were doing research on the clan to make the clan an official shinobi clan. Their abilities were like the Hazuki clan, and like that water clan, their abilities were learnable, but very hard to learn and control. Anzo wanted the clan's technique to be more stable, and to have control over their abilities, so that he could merge the clan into his roots organization. And it seems his dear Herzuin didn't know about this as well. Arachimaru had few ideas, and one of them involved another clan that lived on the border of the Land of Fire. A clan that was full of unstable lunatics, that could transform into monsters. A name popped up in reading the description of the clan, it was Jugo. Abito grinned, so, the snake will find Jugo's clan, and then Ryuchi Cave it seems that I won't be able to spy on you anymore snake, but I will take your first version of Curse Mark as research as a parting gift. And the Aburi clan it seems that my dream of being a ghost isn't quite far. Abito already could blend with earth pretty well cause of his earth chakra mastery. But you are no ghost unless you can pass through your opponents. Others might shit on the Hazuki clan, cause of Sajetsu's comedic relief. But unless put against a lightning release user, Sajetsu's water body ability was quite amazing. It was a mini version of Kamui, with a small drawback from lightning release. Sure he couldn't teleport with that jutsu. But this world was quite different already, he wouldn't be surprised if he didn't get Kamui as his Manjekyo ability. Also, the bats would love to get anything related to the lost arts of Senjutsu. Mainly the old bat that still refuses to acknowledge him. They might even come up with a stable and more functional version of Senjutsu before Orochimaru. Abito wanted a few people dead. And the snake Sanin was one of them sure things aren't like the cannon, and he could turn out a great asset for the village. But when did he care for the village again, Orochimaru in the long run would be a hassle, and he would make sure not give him a chance to run. He's a shitbag that does keep Genkai research on children, and that kind of man is better off dead, if you read how many poor kids he killed, but he was nowhere near as strong for that. And there was also Kabuto, the kid wasn't in the orphanage yet. But he would keep an eye on it. Maybe he couldn't kill Orochimaru, but he could take something else from him. Anyway, the Aburi clan shouldn't have any weakness if their ability could be stabilized. And for that Orochimaru used the curse Mark Abito is good at Fuenjutsu with his creative approach to things. But he wasn't sure if he could do this alone. It was a good thing there was one grumpy bat who might be able to help him with that. So first things first. Abito whistled looking up at the ceiling, where hundreds of bats hung down from. His whistle made the already silent cave, more silent before a few of the bats came flying down making an exact clone of Abito. You know what to do Abito said grabbing his clone by the shoulder, and pushing almost three quarters of chakra into it. This should be enough for a week. Go and place a reverse summon there. Honestly, the reverse summoning was a very good way to teleport to other locations. But that only happened if you were trusted by your summoning clan enough, and they had the ability to pull it off. And unlike his bats or the toads, other summoning animals weren't too trusting of their summoners. Like for example, Arachimaru was a snake summoner, and yet didn't know the location of the Ryuchi cave. 
The bat nodded, before bursting into a flock of bats going out. He wouldn't let Orochimaru get Jugo either. If Get could get Jugo before he does, then he might even delay the snake more in his path to becoming a sage. But then again the root report said a whole clan of lunatics, not one. So he wasn't sure how that would go anyhow the report didn't exactly say where the clan was located, only the general area. So it would take time. If the old bat did help, creating a curse seal from scratch shouldn't be tough. But if she couldn't I could always look into the curse seal after Orochimaru puts it on Anko. Poor girl, but then again she won't die, so I don't need to be a goody two-shoes. And even if she did why would I care? I just need to seal, not her. Abito blinked before he laughed, staying in the world for only four years changed him quite much. Now he was willing to turn a side eye if someone was in trouble. Oh, how cruel the shinobi world was. It even changed him. It wasn't just a cartoon where you have the power of friendship and whatnot. Speaking of seals, he looked at another drawing in his table. It was a marking of tri-bladed kunai. Whom I should also focus on more few in jutsu. I'm getting nowhere with complex formulas he sighed. The Horatian no jutsu. First of all his sealing arts weren't up to that level where he could make it from scratch, and also because he didn't have lighting affinity Abito had mastered yin and yang release from the bats, which wasn't tough if you are practicing advanced chakra control and medical ninjutsu from an early age. But the bat clan didn't have many jutsu related to them, so he had to look elsewhere. After four years he had mastered wind, fire, earth, yin, and yang release. And that's even admirable if you consider that he couldn't create multiple shadow clones, and hacks his way through things. Honestly being a Jinkiriki was a hacks. Not getting headaches or brain damage from the clone's memories, was truly one of the broken abilities to have. There was a reason why people didn't spam that jutsu, even with large chakra reserves. So he opted for a substitute instead. The bat clones, each clone had three of four bats in them. The good thing about the bat clones was they would only send the valuable memories without entirely cancelling the jutsu. With the added benefit of being partially intangible from physical damage, it was quite overpowering. The only downside was that Abito could only make 10 of them at once. It wasn't cause of him, not all bats could transform into clones. Nightwing and his team made two of clones, and this clone now was another of his clone, so Abito could only make seven more clones. He sighed and looked up, he hoped that the new recruit of bats would at least give him one or two new clones. Seven was an okay number if he didn't go against someone like Minato. But even with ten, things won't change much. The man was way too fast. Thinking about the blondie the Horatian no jutsu, or lightning rod jutsu, used yang to summon and lightning to connect one point to the other. Elemental releases could be learned even if you weren't born with it after time it could even turn to chakra affinity. If Abito used chakra paper right now. It would show three elements, wind, earth, and fire. If you master an element to a certain extent, your body starts to adapt and make it part of your chakra affinity. Chakra paper didn't show yin or yang, but if it did, maybe it would show as well. And also mastering an element cuts of the necessary signs for a jutsu by half. More so if you practice that jutsu even more. And of course, Abito figured out how to make hand signs with hand, actually, Kagami taught him that. But honestly, casting jutsu with one hand could sometimes be quite tough, his control wasn't there yet. So learning lightning release nah it would take at least two years to learn an element to the extent of affinity. Abito could only do it with fire cause of the hundreds of different methods of fire release training that were in Konoha, not to mention in the Ichiha compound. And lightning was quite rare here, there were a few documents by Izuna Ichiha, but that was it. So there were few training methods. And he couldn't just ask Minato or Kakashi those kinds of knowledge were kinda kept secret. And there was tension amongst the villages, a war would break out soon. He would rather hone his skills and focus on other things, rather than learn lightning jutsu. Like for example, adding already created jutsus with yin or yang release to add more power to them, now that he was good at it. Even if he mastered the lightning release to that extent, he would still need to figure out his very own Horatian formula from the scratch, he already had looked at Tabarama's formula. And it was way too complicated for him, Minato's was much easier, and looked nothing similar to Tabarama's. Yet he could see similarities in it. And when he looked into Tabarama's formula in the Hokage's office, he knew it didn't go into details of how it was created. Some might wonder how he got to learn about Tabarama's secret jutsu well, 
Sneaking bats into the Hokage's office to peek at the Forbidden Scrolls isn't tough, when Kagami is out of the village. I mean a kid like Naruto flashed his man boobs and got it from Hiruzen. The lightning rod jutsu or Horatio no jutsu was quite the odd one. Usually, an element was summoned or generated. You couldn't just create something out of nothing. Even this world had some universal laws. For example, fire and wind release jutsu generated the elements, while water and earth release jutsu would summon the elements if there wasn't any adequate source. But lightning was an element of speed, it was generated, and how the fuck did Tabarama manage to add it, with the summoning jutsu to make it, was over his head. The Horatian no jutsu would need to wait a few years. And that's not the fact that it wasn't the most complicated sealing jutsu he saw. In these four years he had gone outside the village only twice. And both of the times it was in Yuzushi Agakur. And there he saw it the village was a work of sealing arts. Walls were erected and augmented with sealing jutsus shinobi gear that had at a minimum of 10 active sealing formulas in it. But all of that couldn't compare with the Yuzumaki elemental mask he saw there. Even though Kusina had a bit of bitterness towards the Yuzumaki cage. But the man wasn't that bad, and even let him enter his personal office where the mask was stored. Of course, Kishina being a princess and him being his disciple who was in a Chiha prodigy also helped with his case. And man that mask was great. He didn't see the Shinigami mask, but the elemental mask was a piece of art. Created by the late Yuzumaki Keiji Ashina Yuzumaki. After wearing the mask one could use three elements fire, water, and lightning like a pro. All three elements were known for their destructiveness. And after wearing the mask one could use the elements without weaving a single hand seal. The only drawback was it needed a stupid amount of Yuzumaki chakra to use it. It was even better to work than Tabarama's Horatian no Jutsu. And yet the late cage deemed it a failed experiment. Only the current Yuzumaki head has access to wear the mask in battle. The sealing masters in the Yuzumaki village wanted to mass produce it even with one element. Honestly, the mask was like showing candy to a beetle. And for that, he was spending almost half of his time practicing complicated Yuzumaki formulas. So that he could create one. And also he had tons of ideas to use sealing in other areas. Honestly, if he was helped by either Kashina or even the old bat. His dreams of making half of the stuff would be already over. Yet one was too grumpy to even acknowledge him, while he couldn't share everything with Kashina. She was an airhead sometimes. And he couldn't let his ambitions be known to guys like Hiruzen or Danzo. His bats had gathered what happened to Sakumo, and it taught him a lesson to not trust anyone who had patriarchy lighting up his ass. So his few Jutsu dreams had to wait. But what didn't need to wait was Yamanaka's mind Jutsu and Nara's shadow Jutsu. Did he send his bats to sneak up on the clans to steal their family Jutsu? Yup he sure did. The Kinda already had a version of a gentle fist under his belt cause of training and seeing Yukai Kohinata fight. So he didn't need that. Also, he already had a formula for the Akamichi clan pills, but he didn't have the Naras and Yamanaka yet. It takes years to perfect Yamanaka and Nara technique. But Ibido wanted to do them in one year. Nara's shadow position cause of the flexibility of their jutsu and Yamanaka cause, he wanted to make a seal that would make him immune to those mind fuckers. Now that Kagami was going on missions, he would sometimes find Root Shinobu spying on him, while he trained Shisui. And Roots had quite the number of Yamanaka in their ranks, and he didn't want any accidents happening. The tension between the village and the Achiha was down, but that didn't mean things could get bad in the future. He would rather be safe than sorry. Also about other bloodlines, the war would give him more time to gather samples on them as well. For now, he would focus on a few things. He might have learned a lot of things in the few years. And he could probably take on a few low-level jonins himself if he pushed himself to it. But Anbu Jonins or high-level Jonins would be too much for him. And being cage level took strength and raw chakra reserves. Honestly, how did Minato have so much chakra? Oh, he was a sage. Maybe the toads had something to do with that. For Sinjutsu one does need to have big chakra reserves. Being a Jonin was nothing compared to a cage level shinobi. In the original, Minato took down 10,000 Iwara campers, and Rakage held off 10,000 men for three days straight against enemy Shinobis, so his Kumo Shinobis could escape. So Obito still had much to go for. Almost three weeks later, so you think this team is up for real missions? Hiruzen asked as he looked up from his paperwork, his pipe smoking on his lips. 
Yes, Hokage-sama. They are quite capable. Minato said, looking at his team, who almost all had a look of excitement on their faces. Even though they didn't do the standard D rank missions for all Genin team. Their teamwork is quite good, and they can handle themselves pretty well against me, that's why I believe that they are ready for it. The Hokage nodded, well, we don't have any good field C rank missions oh, Minato, why not take them on your mission? Minato nodded, I was thinking the same thing. Well, they did specifically want you for the mission. Bringing along some gen in backup won't be disliked by the employer. Hiruzen said again as he took out the scroll, well, just be safe especially as you will be outside the village. Abito yawned, don't sweat it old man. He said boringly, making Rin and Minato frown with a lack of honorifics. It will be done in a flash. Rin spoke, Abito-kun, you don't speak that way towards the Hokage. Kakashi agreed, don't annoy the old man. He's just worried about a new green leaf like you. Hiruzen just laughed, while Minato and Rin sweat dropped. They were way too formal to be speaking to the Hokage this way. You wanna repeat that dog, boy Abito said in a challenging voice. The last beating wasn't good enough, eh please, you barely won the fight, cause of your stupid gloves. Yeah, yeah sore loser. Fight without your chihuahua. Rin just sighed as she stepped forward before both of them started fighting. It's almost as if both of them enjoyed getting injured. It was a good thing Abito also knew medical ninjutsu, or it Hiruzen was amused at the display. A Senju and an Ichiha in the same team well isn't that what the first Hokage dreamt of. Minato had somehow been able to quiet them down, before leaving the room. But Hiruzen didn't mind, he was rather thinking about something. Abito and Ichiha that Kagami taught himself, a prodigy in ninjutsu, jinjutsu, and fuinjutsu. Kagami even expressed highly of Abito's odd style of incorporating unusual tojutsu with his ninjutsu. The boy had already mastered the Sharingan to the third tomo, and that wasn't his all. He was very fast on his feet as well. No one could beat Kagami in using the body flicker, Hiruzen still remembered how Tabarama sensei praised Kagami's speed when he was a genin. And as Kagami's student, Abito didn't fall back either. He had seen the boy fighter train Kagami's nephew, Abito was very fast on his feet. The only thing keeping him slow was his physical body, that boy would gain speed the more older he got. Kagami really went overboard with his student. Even training him in ambu drills or even stay put during torture sessions to kill off any hesitation in real situations. Even Hiruzen didn't push Urachimaru that hard, and the boy was much older back then. For a nine-year-old, that kind of talent was only seen in Madara himself. But there was just one slight problem. The boy was too much attached to his friends or families, not the Kanoha or even the Achiha clan. He had deep trust issues, Kagami had noted. But Arachimaru was kinda similar, and he is a great shinobi. Minato was arguably the fastest shinobi Hiruzen knew off also added that about Abito's speed. Speaking of Minato, Abito had shown interest in the Horatian no Jutsu. Hiruzen might not be a few in Jutsu expert like his students, but if the Achiha was given the full Horatian formula, he would be able to make the Jutsu his own. And at that time Danzo had convinced him otherwise to not let an Achiha get the Jutsu. And he had agreed. Also if Abito could reach S-class or cage level without that Jutsu. Then giving him that after he takes the hat won't be a problem. But for that Abito needed to be at least 20 years old, and the boy was only 9 now. Anyhow if the boy did manage to figure out the Horatian no jutsu on his own, he wouldn't protest. He had seen his flawed way of thinking. And stopping a speed star like Ibido won't do anything good to Kanoha. Honestly what was about Kanoha and its speed starts? Abarama, Kagami, Sakumo, Arachimaru, Minato it was just funny with how much importance Kumo gave to their speed, and yet Kanoha already was blessed with them. And now Shinobis like Abito and Kakashi the future would have a lot of speed starts. Thinking about Kakashi. The boy looked like a mini version of Tabarama, every time he glared. And he was strong as well, Sakumo had taught him well in swordsmanship and utilizing his summon with the lightning release. Kakashi might not have many things going for him like Abito. But as an experienced shinobi, he knew focusing on particular areas one at a time, could make a shinobi very deadly. Like for him example, he almost knew all of the jutsus that were in Kanoha. Including clan secret ones, they didn't call him the professor for nothing, yet he didn't use them much, mostly relying on his summon King Enma and his bow staff transformation. So he could see Kakashi go on a similar route. 
And Sukumo did gain his fame as the White Fang in the same way. Using his Y Ladamantium blade to cut down his enemies, holding off the sand on his own. All in all, it was a good decision to put Kakashi and Abito in the same team. Even though they bickered most of the time, Hiruzen couldn't see any enmity in them. After a lot of consideration, Hiruzen wanted to pass off the hat to a non-claimed shinobi. And he wasn't going to make Karachimaru his successor. Even though the boy was his favorite student, he wasn't meant for it. And as a village leader he had to put aside his personal feelings. The boy was way too dark and was doing a lot of blackwater research behind the door. Even though he permitted the research due to persuasion of both Danzo and Arachimaru, but doing experiments with Hashirama DNA, when Tabarama completely forbid it. It didn't go well for him. And others like Kagami and Tarifu had the same thing in mind. And not to mention that Arachimaru wasn't very good at working with people, mainly plant shinobi. That's why he decided to take Minato as the next Hokage. Jiraiya believed in that boy quite a lot. A perfect sage, creating a new jutsu at his age like the Rasengan and mastering the Horatian no jutsu. He would be a good hokage to keep in line all of the clans in check. Clan politics were seeping into Konoha, and as a shinobi village, he didn't want that. Tarifu and Kagami had shown him how Danzo, Kaharu, and Hamura were manipulating it to their favor. And Hiruzen didn't like it at all. As the hokage for two decades, Hiruzen didn't favor his Saratobi clan in the slightest. Yet the Shimura and other clans were getting benefits cause of being connected elders in Konoha. Sometimes he could be such a blind. Hiruzen wanted to stop it. Now that Ichiha was a bit calm after giving young Abito the highlight, they would also be a bit controllable if Minato became the Hokage. Fugaku Ichiha was another Hokage candidate. But the other clans won't like it having an Ichiha be the Hokage not yet at least. So the Ichiha clan won't be too upset if Minato who is also officially a Bito sensei became the Hokage. Hiruzen thought quite a lot about it. And after Minato, if the Ichiha clan wanted they could make a Bito the next Hokage. Of course, that if he doesn't get out shown or unfortunately killed. Hiruzen had seen many young rising stars die off, due to politics. Sakuma was a victim of it, and Dan Kato died for it. So that is why Hiruzen was playing his cards right. The Achiha was a big clan and was arguably the strongest in Konoha. The Achiha and Senju were always blessed with talent. And while Sakumo and Swandate stood out from the Senju side, the Achiha had quite a lot. Kagami Achiha, Fugaku Achiha, Abito Achiha, and Kana Achiha were the primary talent. And not to mention Ken Achiha, Fugaku's brother, and Shisui Achiha who would also be quite formidable. So he wanted the clan to be pleased as well. Honestly, he would have made an Ichiha the Hokage, and cut off any enemies that they had in the village, if it weren't for the instability that it would cause among other clans. That was why after Minato, Hiruzen believed Abito would be a good candidate. And even if something happened to Abito. Kakashi was a good Hokage candidate as well. Sometimes he wondered why his son Asuma wasn't even noteworthy. Our mission will be to escort these Yugakur shinobis back to their village, Minato said as his team started following behind the four shinobis. This mission might be a low C rank mission. But things could escalate quickly, so be ready to use lethal means necessary. All three of them nodded. Minato was dead serious about this, there wasn't his usual carefree smile on his face, nor was there any amusement in his eyes. It was all cold and blank, they were on a mission. And things could go bad quickly if they are not careful. Okay, team. Go formation B4. Minato commanded as he speed up, taking the front while Kakashi, Rin, and Abito took the flank of the four Yudakar Shinobi. After some time, Abito broke the silence. Wanna bet if this mission will go south in the next hour. Kakashi snorted, while focusing on keeping a steady speed. But Rin looked a bit off, uh Abito-kun it isn't nice to say stuff like these in our first mission. She said, and I'm sure that Minato-sensei will get us out of any trouble if that happens, you don't get it, do you? Bakashi scoffed, the Achiha here is a battle maniac. And wants to get some action in his first mission. Oh, come one send you don't tell me you are scared of some random shinobi. And the only enemies that Yugakur has is from land of tea what are they gonna do, threaten us to drink tea. A beat used, and here I thought that Tabarama's piss ran through your veins. Bakashi gave his usual glare to Abito. Who pulled down his glasses and made a face. The haddock was about to say something, but stopped himself and sighed. Why was he getting tangled in this again he is just going to ignore him. 
After running several miles and journeying deep inside the forest, the first signs of enemies were shown. Abito of course grinned. It seemed I am right. Of course, in these past years, his sensory skills also increased quite a lot. Of course, it wasn't as good as Madara's. Madara Ichiha was an adept sensor, being able to detect others' chakra signature countries away, determine a person's clan, and the nature of their Kekei Genkai, and even differentiate species. And Abito was nowhere near that, but he could sense pretty well around him for a few miles. Kakashi breathed out tiredly, he was actually hoping that this mission wouldn't go south. He really wanted to enjoy his visit in the land of hot water. Well, we are in a tight spot. But how did you know that beforehand, exactly? He could also smell the foreign chakra in the air. And it was obvious that they were surrounded. Would you believe me if I said that I knew a guy called Kishimoto? Abito mused. Warin asked confused, before whispering. Did you guys find something? Abito just smiled. That my dear is that we are toast. As in we have exactly 43 shinobis surrounding us. He said, not bothering to whisper at all. He could see with his Sharingan that Yugakur Shinobis were tense, so they had also figured along with their blonde sensei. Rin was wide-eyed, but tried to remain as calm as possible. But she couldn't figure out why both Kakashi and Abito were so calm. Kakashi he could guess, as he was a genius, already genin for his age. But Abito, sure he was strong, but having been surrounded by enemy nins was no joke. Yet it didn't bother him. Rin gulped. But at the same time, she felt a hand on her shoulder, hey, don't get distracted. Put on a brave calculating face when up against multiple enemies. You want them to think you are cooking up something unfun for them. Abito said. Kakashi eyed his friend, yes, be careful. He said. Minato sensei should be able to handle all of them. But our main priority is to guard them pointing at the Yugakur shinobi. So we should stick together. He said, aying Abito. A but you are missing something dog boy. Abito said, his Sharingan spinning lazily behind his shades. What if there are traitors amongst us? He whispered. That made both of his teammates frown. You mean one of them? Kakashi glanced at the four shinobis in front. Abito nodded. You don't find it odd, they found the exact same secret route that we were going to take. We even took a not so usual route over the giant forest to go this way. That means there's a mole amongst us. Rin and Kakashi didn't speak, contemplating his words. Minato sensei can take care of all the shinobis, but that doesn't mean we should just be calm. Backstabbers are nothing uncommon. Abito said. Kakashi raised an eyebrow. Then what should we do? He said, split. Abito shook his head, no, they might have the numbers advantage. But we should try to even them out. Abito set a small smile on his face, as his shadow started to stretch wide. His teammates could already see red Sharingan eyes multiplying from his shadows. When Sensei gives the order Kakashi summon all of your dogs. I will bring out all of my clones. And just as he said, that Minato made a sudden U-turn telling the Yugakur Shinobis to move forward, while he met up with his team. You guys protect the clients. I will take care of them. With that, he threw multiple of his tri-bladed kunais away, while cracks of yellow lightning were on him. All three of them nodded. Kakashi went through his hand seals quickly, summoning his dogs, except Akito who he summoned as a sword. While well, bat clones came out of Abito's shadow, all looking exactly like Abito, Sharingan spinning in their eyes. Rin just took out a kunai. Minato didn't look back at his team as he stooped in the middle of the forest. Enemies surrounding him. As a sensor, he could make a guess how many there were. 43 of them. 12 of them were roughly Jonin level based on their chakra pool whereas others were mostly genin with a few chunins. A hefty force for just one scroll. Seeing the yellow flash, almost two-third of the four stopped their approach, standing on trees with kunais out with the intent to kill. A few of the shinobis got past the yellow flash, but Minato trusted his team. They shouldn't be a problem. Let's end this quickly I don't want to stretch the mission too long. Minato said, his deep blue eyes were muted with killing intent. But then again, I would get a chance to show off a bit in front of my team. One of the enemy's nins snorted. You and your babysitting team are going to die. He said, coating his kunai with wind chakra, you can know how tree hampers ain't shit. With that Minato made the first move, going incredibly fast towards the enemy nin. While the other side also moved forward in the group. While Libido was running with the four-man team Yugakur. 
he was thinking about something else. I should be able to get some human test subjects with these many enemy shinobis. No one should notice one or two missing bodies. He thought, not even worried about being surrounded by enemy shinobis. He kinda knew how this mission went, and the whole secret scroll thing was fake. And of course, as an apprentice of an Uzumaki seal master, he had traps ready to be deployed when needed. And even though he was in combat around the mid jonin level. But if things got wrong, only cage level shinobis could stop him from escaping. Escaping from the ground with his earth ghost jutsu or in the air with Geppo. No one except a select few could stop him if he wanted to leave. The shinobi world wasn't about honor or anything, it was about who used his intellect more to survive. And also he had his confidence up due to teammates like Kakashi, who was kinda low level jonin, and Rin who could keep up with a chunin. In the original series, none of them were this strong. He could kinda figure out why Kakashi was strong, Sakumo being alive and all. But Rin was another case, she had improved quite a lot in the past month of training with Team Minato. So other than worrying about the mission, he was thinking about how he could take advantage of the situation. Abito's sensing range was quite large, and he could sense Minato. The man was cutting through enemy ranks like a madman. But a few of the shinobis got past him and were speeding up to their location. Kakashi had noticed that as well, with his odd way of sensing with smell. Abito quickly nodded towards his clones, his clones were made by his chakra along with the bats. So he could give them mental commands as long as they were within his sensing range. Long distances took a lot of time to establish links with. The clones nodded back and four of them moved forward and kept their eyes on Yugakur Shinobis. While the other three would be with him, in combat. Impressioning enemy ninjas would have been quite easy if Nightwing was here, but he was running late. So he had to make do. Even though Abito was a good sensor due to the additional side effects of his unique breathing technique, but it wasn't close to the original. And over the years his so-called glitch vision's range also increased. Calming himself down, Abito tried to tap into that power. He didn't need to use breathing to activate the ability, and after years he could tap into it much quicker. And as he closed his eyes, the world turned dark, before he could see everything in black and white even with his eyes closed and his range increased tremendously. Focusing on everything would give him a migraine, so he focused on Minato. The man was doing fine, and the shinobis that were gaining upon them were also quite near. By his estimation, they would be here in 8 or 9 minutes. So he moved his focus elsewhere, it was in front. Where the bridge was. It was just a few kilometers forward, they would be there in 10 or so minutes. Someone needed to hold them off. There were 15 of them in total. Estimating by chakra reserves and control when using the body flicker, he guessed that out of them, nine were chunin, five were mid to low level jonin, but one of them was a high jonin. And the last one worried him a bit. Cause the last one is also a sensor with how he was giving of chakra sonars. Abido quickly turned off his glitch vision, before it could give him a migraine. Not using it without the breathing technique was quite tough. But he was getting better. Kagami was a natural-born sensor, and drilled a few things into Abito's head, on how to identify enemy shinobi ranks. When they were chasing you, they would usually couldn't hide their chakra or their control over it. Unless of course they had a specific bloodline for it or was in Yuzumaki. It was one of the first tricks the crow summoner taught him, and now he was using it. Abito looked to his right and looked at Kakashi. How big of a wall can you create? The haddock raised an eyebrow, before saying, a few meters tall, and quite wide, if I can be given time. Oh good, we have about six or so minutes, so don't worry about time. Abito said, before looking at Rin. Hold on to this for me. Hold on to this for me. With that Abito tossed one of Minato's kunai towards Rin. The yellow flash had given him two beforehand in the mission. Of course, he couldn't look into the seal matrix or whatnot, there was only one seal on his tri-bladed kunai, the rest of them were inside it, and one would need to break it to look into it. But that didn't mean he couldn't peek a look inside with his glitch vision. And it helped him understand a thing or two anyhow, back to the mission, I will help start going through hand signs. He glanced at Kakashi, who nodded. And mold as much earth chakra as possible. Rin and you guys speed up, Kakashi and I will slow down. Akito you as well. Bakashi didn't question, going through the hand signs. His tactics usually worked well against holding off a cage level shinobi who was playing around with them, so it should work here as well. 
And they kinda did something similar against Minato, also caught the yellow flash off guard with it. So the enemy had no chance. Both the Haddock and the Achiha went through hand signs, modeling Earth Chakra and slowing down their sprint, Akito with their side. Rin looked at them, and saw three of Abito's clones, taking out shurikens. Before using Wind Chakra to make them massive spinning wheels. Before throwing them upwards with a thin chakra string attached to it. Oh, Abito was also going to use the shuriken kite technique. An odd technique that Abito used his large wind discs as kites to control with his chakra strings. As a medical nin, Rin knew how to make chakra strings. Using techniques like mystical palm, was more of sewing wounds back together precisely with chakra strings. So she knew how to make them, but she didn't see anyone in the village use them for combat except Abito with his shurikens. How long Kakashi asked, a bit of sweat on his forehead. The amount of earth chakra he had gathered was quite huge, and was struggling to keep it in check. Abito wasn't doing any better, even though his bat clones didn't need his chakra that much. Still, seven of them was quite taxing for his already mid-level chakra reserves. Just a bit more he grunted. You guys get hiding he barked at his clones, who used the earth ghost technique to go underground. With his normal sensory abilities, the Achiha saw his enemies within sight. And, now. Earth style. Great mud wall. Both Kakashi and Abito spun mid-run and slammed their hands onto the ground. Pushing the chakra into it, changing the terrain, as a massive wall was erected, cutting off the enemy that was in front. TCH, brats, the leading enemy Jonin said, get over the wall, save your chakra. The brats should be exhausted on the other side. We have to kill the brats and take the scroll away before the yellow flash gets here. Hearing his commands all of them followed, using chakra to climb the wall. And crossing it with slight difficulty but when they crossed it and started climbing down, things started happening. Two of their chunins got caught by their feet before getting sucked into the wall, as black rod-like spikes pierced their chest and head, killing them immediately. What the fuck another jonin shouted, get away from the wa before he could finish his sentence his head was sent flying off, as a wave of silver electricity crossed him. It was Kakashi with his silver blade out, running fast down the wall. Before rolling on the ground, running away with great speed. Seeing one of their jonin and two chunins killed, shook the lower level chunin's morals. But the other jonins quickly ordered them to follow the silver-haired boy. Kakashi with his silver lightning moved like a phantom. Speeding up, that was way hard for a chunin to follow. He moved pretty well, using the large trees as cover. One of the jonin specializing in shuriken play, threw weapons at the silver boy. And Kakashi couldn't keep up, falling on his steps a bit, slowing down, for the speed-based jonins to catch up. And when they were just near Kakashi, the leading jonin felt something was wrong. Where was the Achiha but suddenly, his chakra sense caught something, get away from him, the silver-headed Kanoha Shinobi turned into a flock of bats, before merging into the ground. The Achiha had switched with his teammates, but when but that wasn't what bothered the enemy jonin, no, the ground filled with explosive tags did. And it wasn't all, they also saw wind disc-like objects descending from the sky towards them. And with a boom the seals exploded at the same time, shaking almost the entire forest. When the smoke cleared, bodies were scattered. Some missing limbs, some getting cut off by the wind shuriken discs. Blood was everywhere only three chunin survived, while the rest was dead. None of the jonin died, because of being careful, when they saw their first jonin die. But it did shake his morals. And finally, the leading jonin figured out what happened. The earth wall was just a hoax to mess up his sensing abilities. When a massive earth release was formed, it leaked earth chakra everywhere. And that was why he couldn't sense the explosion tags nor the head hunting jutsu. But the ladder of the jutsu was different from the usual one to begin with. Using his sensory abilities again, the leading jonin clicked his tongue. They had safely crossed the bridge now. They would need to rely on their inside man. The leading jonin gritted his teeth. Bested by kids who just stopped drinking their mother's milk. Fucking no chunin fall back and get back to camp. Jonin's with me we have to hunt those brats down. The chunins were too shaken up and just nodded. They were glad that they didn't need to be here. And used body flicker to head west, where they had set up an emergency camp. But no one saw that a flicker or red sharingan that was hiding in their shadows. As they started running one of the jonins asked the leading one. Captain Buko is there anything else we will have to worry about? Buko gave a side glance before speaking. 
The silver head is a quick one with his lightning release. And the Achiha is surprisingly a crafty trap master I don't think the brat has his Sharingan yet. But just to be safe, avoid eye contact. The other Jonans nodded, and all five of them speed up towards the bridge. But there was just one problem, the bride was broken already. What the fuck is the team stupid? One of the Jonan grunted. They might have cut off our route for some time. But their sensei won't be able to join them either. Stupid tree hampers the distance wasn't far, all of the Jonans could cross it with a massive jump. But they could see seals on the other side, explosion seals. They would need to set them off beforehand if they want to make the jump. Buko the leading Jonan felt a headache. Wasn't that supposed to be Genin three-man squads? What was Kanoha feeding their Genins? Two of them killed of one Jonan with six of their Chunins. Fuck he had to kill those brats if he wanted to save his face back in the village. The only stupid one here is you guys. All of them moved their heads sideways and saw the Achiha lazily carrying a tri-bladed kunai. You got some balls boy. Yuko said, taking out his kunai, killing intent in air. But you are going to die here Abito sighed, no you guys are why do you think I stopped your escape route here? Another Jonan scoffed, the only escape route you cut off is yours. Abito shook his head again. No, he should be here now. And he casually tossed the tri-bladed kunai, and suddenly a blonde appeared. See you guys are fucked. Okay, I see what you did there Minato said, taking out his kunai from the ground. Good thing holding them here he said holding out his hand, a Rasengan forming. Thanks sensei. I will need to take care of the other three Chunins Abito said, giving enemy nins a sadistic grin. So, enjoy your time. With that Abito became a mass of bats merging with the earth. On the other end, as the three Chunins started making their way toward the camp, they started hearing weird sounds. They would have ignored it, but it was getting louder and louder. So they stopped midway, taking a battle formation. Hey, do you hear that one of the Chunin asked. The boy was a late teen. The other Chunin who were around the age of 20s nodded. It sounds like it's calling something or someone one of them said. The other shuddered, but from where, none of them noticed that something sinister was hiding in their shadows. It was their doom. Beneath you all three of them jerked their head downwards towards their shadow. And they were hit by a cloud of black smoke. All three of them inhaled them by accident. Coughing up and separating. What the one of them fell back, while the other two jumped back a bit. The color of the sky started changing, everything was getting dark, the black fog was rising from the ground, and they could hear the sounds getting louder and louder again. And from within the black fog they saw dead rotten flesh coming out of their shadows getting eaten by bats. That screeched their way, attacking them. One of the bats bit into them, and their flesh started rotting at an alarming rate. The pain was killing them, it felt like thousands of needles were pricking their skin. Torturing them, killing them by the second. It was unbearable. They felt pain, disgust, and nauseated. They couldn't keep it anymore and started to empty their stomach. The Chunins wanted to run, so they tried. Betting wobbly legs they fell. The number of bats grew, as more came feasting on their rotting flesh. They could only watch in horror as their bodies gave out. When they looked up they saw a man sitting there with blood red eyes, his red eyes were spinning, giving it a more sinister appearance. They didn't know who it was, but they knew it was bad news. And also knew he was the reason why they were in this state. Yet at this point, they didn't feel hatred towards him. They only feared him. So with all of their strength, they started to crawl away from him. All three of the Chunins didn't know what was happening, yet were trying to get away, crawling like toddlers. One of the Chunins who had a good understanding of medical knowledge, tried to heal himself with chakra on the outside, the real libido was looking at the pale faces of the Chunins that were crawling their way out. After taking in the fear toxins the Chunins fell into the hellish hallucinations, and it was already 15 seconds in. Puking and screaming in pain were common reactions. Oh and one of them wet their pants well, understandable. Abido saw one of the Chunins getting somehow back to his senses with medical ninjutsu, to clear some of his vision. So it's you he said with a shaky voice. Called it Abido muttered, writing something down on his notepad. So medical nins or jonins who have good chakra control, won't be put down by my toxin for so long. Unlike poisons that would physically affect the enemy. The bat's toxins only made his opponent see fear and hallucinations. It acted quicker than any poison, but the effect went away just as quickly if the said victim was a trained medical nin. 
The Chunin that had broke free somewhat was terrified when he saw Beto. The man wanted to his body to move yet his body was still trembling it wouldn't work. Abito blinked. Now that's new he said, so even though my fear toxins don't affect anything physical the trauma from the fear can even stop movement strange side effect yet welcomed. The bats had fear toxins, but this toxin was produced from his own body. Every bat's toxins had a bit different effect. Nightwing's team had older bats that specialized in fear toxins, and they could make shit ton of toxins with various effects. So it wasn't something odd that Abito's fear toxin acted differently as well. Actually, it would have been easy if Abito could have learned all different types of fear toxins. Have a collection of his own. But Abito couldn't learn them, as they were produced from their own body. So Abito had to get better at using toxins to produce stronger ones. Also against stronger opponents, it would be better to use other bats' toxins rather than his own. They were more powerful and deadlier than his, but he also wanted to improve in that craft. That away you ya, we don't want you to make any sounds, Abito said, before making eye contact, and with his Sharingan casting a memory repeating Jinjutsu. Whatever he saw in there would get repeated in his head. Was it cruel maybe? But he didn't care. If you were a Chunin, you likely had a kill count above two digits. Sure his enemy might be a good guy. But would they show mercy if Rin, Kakashi or him were on their feet? Nope. So, why would he still, there was a piece of him that wasn't comfortable with this. But then again, this was always the next step. And he knew it from the start, and most of the pain and suffering were physiological anyway. Contrary to popular beliefs, breaking someone's mind isn't easy. Gagami had sat him through observing T and I rooms. It took a skilled Yamanaka to break someone's mind, and took a good chunk of time doing so. Whereas just cutting a man's dicks off would do half the job for any shinobi, so it wasn't that cruel after the shit he saw coming to this world. And Abido needed their bodies anyway for Fuenjutsu and other experiments. So there was no chance of organ failure or any resistance like that. So the chances of dying were low as well. And he also needed some people to experiment with his fear toxins on. But they won't last too long. Cause he had quite a lot of experiments staked up over the years. But now that he had a green card on getting in and out of the village. Taking on a bandit camp mission won't be too bad. Abito wanted to know if there were other traitors or enemies in the front. But he wasn't good with his Sharingan and probing memories. Only a few were to begin with. There was a reason why the Yamanaka clan was highly valued for information gathering. But that was why he was learning their jutsus. Sure he couldn't get all their jutsu just by the bats observing. But he could figure things out. So it's time to get back Abito muttered, before two other Abito clones appeared. Take them away, boys, his first ever fear toxin experiment was a success. He was half worried that it won't work. Abito for the past four years couldn't leave the village, and any criminals were taken care of by the Achiha police force. So he had no human scumbags to experiment on. Also, he was being super paranoid about hiding his fear toxins. Abito was a prodigy and a bat summoner. And people like Arachimaru knew that obviously, but there are other bat clans, no need to show him or give him any news that it was the same bat clan from Ryuchi Cave. Arachimaru might not know about it, but his summons might. And they might attack him for that. So he needed to lay low. Also, Abito wasn't fully able to produce fear toxins on his own, until just recently. He had quite a few ideas on how to use them. Water Jutsu like the Hidden Mist Jutsu, would be a very good way to spread fear toxins to his enemies, and cut them down. Enough with the fantasies, Abito looked towards the northeast, with his glitch vision activated. Minato was dealing with the last two Jonans. So he had to go, the clones had already taken the prisoners away. With that, Abito made a single hand sign and breathed out a large fireball a random direction. And threw some explosive kunais towards the ground. Now, this should cover up his tracks okay, it was time to go. Rather than just running on land, Abito jumped up using Geppo. And used a chakra enhanced version of it to body flicker through the air at sonic speed, he was easily cancelling the sounds with his wind release. Honestly, Abito overestimated the Jonans. First of all they weren't Kanoha Jonans or even from any major villages. So they weren't that strong. And he and Kakashi might have been able to take all of them, but he was going to play it safe and not act rashly he could have taken them head on, but putting them against Minato was a wiser decision. This way he got the prisoners. 
After a few steps in the Arabido landed near Minato, who just finished his battle, with a Rasengan to the leading Jonin's head. Leaving a headless body, Anabito landed near. Of course, it wasn't like the show where taking a Rasengan to the head, kept your head intact. When Minato used it, it made enemy heads pop akin to smashed watermelons. Eyeball out and brain matter everywhere. It wasn't ranked air rank jutsu for nothing. Caught you in off time Abito said, not minding the blood and gore that was around him. Minato just rolled his eyes, did you finish the mafia up, deep charred with kunai toppings in the head. Abito lied, and fake froze. But I forgot to bring their bodies do we need to do that? Minato shook his head, taking out a handkerchief and wiping away the opponent's blood from his clothes. The man didn't seem a bit winded. Not unless they have bounties. And leaving their bodies will at least do some good to the animals living in the forest. Preserving nature and all. Abito just chuckled. In the small time, he was away, Minato's fight with the Jonins changed the landscape quite a bit. Craters everywhere, brunt trees, blood-covered grasses, and decapitated limbs here and there, if things were this bad here, how would they be if a war breaks out? Okay so we should leave now. I have already given on of your kunais to Rin. Abito said, and there might be traitors amongst the client, so we should be careful. I know, the yellow flash nodded, anyway, let's catch up with them. With that, Minato grabbed onto Abito's shoulder and was off. As Kakashi caught up to Rin, he kept his eye on the team of Utaker. There were four Abito clones on each of their sides. A good way to spread the numbers out, but Kakashi was also ready. There was a mole in the clients, there was no doubt about it. So he was going to keep his blade unsheathed just for safety. If things did go south, he would prioritize his comrade over the stupid mission. So he was kept close to Rin. Even though he didn't want to admit it, in Team Minato. Only Rin was the weak link, the girl was working her ass off after joining the team. But there was so much one can improve in one month of training. Whereas Abito and him were trained by legends since birth. If Rin could stick with them, she should catch up soon. And there was no way, he was going to put her in trouble, just cause she was weak now. On the other hand, two of the Yugaker Shinobis were observing the whole thing and acted immediately. They wanted to act before the silver-headed boy got here, but the boy was exceptionally fast for a nine-year-old. Both of the Yugaker traders took out two kunais, and stabbed them towards the Abito clone, before attacking the known scroll holder. Or that was the plan, but the kunais didn't hit the Abito clones, as they partially turned intangible. And caught onto their hands, throwing them sideways. What though the leading Yugaker shinobi was surprised. Gota, Sato you guys are betraying the village. How could you? He said taking his kunai out. Everyone stopped their running and was looking at the two traitors. Who the fuck cares about the village? Just die one of them said, trying to speed up towards the leader. But two of the Abito's clones were in his way, and one of the silver hair's dogs bit into his legs. Before he could do anything, another of Abito's clones threw multiple shurikens at him. Killing him on the spot. Seeing one of the traitors get killed the other one. Made a run for it. But Kakashi was already at him, stopping his escape with his silver blade. While his dogs bit into him from all sides, and accidentally killing him in the process. Well, we are a bit late everyone moved their head, and found the yellow flash, along with the chair. You guys are back Rin stuttered, getting almost spooked out. When Abito and Minato appeared beside her out of nowhere, she should have expected it, she was the one who was carrying the kunai. Wait, did you guys take care all of them? For the enemy Shinobis Rin said, trying to not look at the dead bodies of the enemies. Unlike everyone here, she wasn't accustomed to death. It was a good thing that the Abito clones were cleaning up the mess. Well, we do have the yellow flash as our sensei. So it wasn't that hard. Abito said, anyhow, good thing we got here in time. Now you guys can take back a traitor back in the village. The two remaining Yugaker Shinobis didn't seem as relaxed as the Kanoha team. So they just nodded, seeing the bodies of the traitors get forcefully barred with Earth release. Our mission should be over. Abito continued. The mission only said, we need to help you cross till the forest border, and we are beyond it. So no, we don't know if there are other traitors amongst our ranks. So we would like to extend the mission. Accompany both of us to the village. We will give you the extra payment. The leader said, looking to his side and nodding. The other Yugaker shinobi nodded back and took out a similar scroll to the one the leader was carrying. You see both of us were given the scrolls. But only one of them is real. The leader said. 
So we would like some capable Shinobis like yourself to accompany us back to the land of hot water. Abita was a bit surprised. That didn't happen in the original series. But then again why was he even surprised? Okay. We will do that. Minato said. This mission went to rank A the moment enemies attacked. The numbers were no joke. So it should be fine going the extra mile. What do you guys say? I'm okay with it. Rin said, she was still shaken up, but it wasn't going to hold her off. Kakashi crossed his arms and nodded. Well, as long as no other T-freaks attack. You know Kakashi, you can be such a downer sometimes. Getting attacked means more field experience. Abito said, and more opportunities for test subjects. Uh, of course, you will say that, but don't call me dumb. Kakashi retorted. How many Jonins did you kill anyway? Abito opened his mouth and closed it. Well, technically zero but no buts, there's a reason why I'm a rank senior than you, Kakashi said, with a bit of smugness. I don't want to throw my rank of a chunin to a genin like you. Abito's brows twitched, oh, yeah. I took down nine chunins. Another one won't matter anyhow. Rin just sighed. How did they even have the energy to continue? See, we running a few extra miles won't be a problem, Minato said. While well, the Yugakur Shinobis wondered how one kid could kill a Jonin, while the other killed nine Chunins. They were just happy that this village was allies of Konoha. What were they feeding their Jenins anyway? By the time the sun was setting Team Minato was just outside the gates of Land of Hot Water, or more famously known as Land of Hot Springs. Wow, the village sure does hold up its name for being one of the most beautiful villages. Rin said, looking at the massive gates, filled with cravings, giving a feel of ancient beauty. As they entered the village the buildings, streets everything was different from how it was in Konoha. Even Abido and Kakashi was a bit amazed by it. The team followed the two Yugakur Shinobis to their cage's office. Before getting discharged, while well Minato would discuss something about the mission. And that gave them the chance to explore the land of hot water. As all three of them walked, only Akito tagged along with them. The rest of the dogs had returned to their summoning realm. And generally, Akito acted more like a pet Pokemon, rather than a summoning dog. This place really is different from Kanoha, Rin said, in wonder. There are so many people living here for such a small place hmm, I would rather say Kanoha is too big. Abido said, and it's one of the major five villages of course it would be big. But the land of hot springs is quite good in size, it's just that way too many people visit here for vacations. Um Abido have you ever been outside the village before? You seem to know about this stuff. Well, other than visiting a dozen of countries in his world, he did get out of Konoha. Yes, I did visit the Yuzumaki village Uzushiagakur. Kakashi asked, it's not far from here yeah, anyhow what do you guys wanna do? Abito asked. I would have loved to get something to eat, but I'm kinda sweaty. So, why not visit one of the hot springs? Rin suggested. Abito nodded, he was going to say something. When something, no someone caught his senses. And he stopped walking, moving his hand to the side stopping his teammates from moving forward. And it was when a blur of white was tossed out, hitting the nearby wall. And forming a crack. All of the three Kanoha Shinobis blinked. It was one of the three legendary Sanans, the Toad Sage Jiraiya. Abido, Rin and Kakashi quickly took out their opponents and looked in the direction from which the Toad Sage came. Aoi, old man who's the enemy? Kakashi asked. Jiraiya who was massaging his jaw, was standing up with his using the well as support. He frowned when someone called him an old man. Who are you calling an old man Gaki? He moved his head towards the three kids and blinked. Okay, why is Akumo sans kid doing here and with Kagami's brat no less? Aoi, remember our names. Both Abito and Kakashi said at once. Both of them felt pride in being trained by legendary Shinobis, but they still had their names. Both of them had met Jiraiya before a couple of times, so it wasn't something new. Jiraiya was going to say something was cut off. Come back here you perverted frog. Someone growled from inside the building. And take the betting like a man. And it made all of them freeze by the sheer amount of killing intent a certain shinobi was radiating. Jiraiya seemed to get paler hearing the voice. When the woman in question finally came out, it was reviled to beat Tsunade with a towel wrapping her. Abita was stunned to see her. The Anime didn't do justice to her beauty, blonde with jaded skin, and tits bigger than a young master's ego. She was a beauty beyond he had ever seen. Wait, did this mean he was into older women? 
Meh he didn't care much. Anyhow he was more interested in what was happening with Jiraiya. Sunate I can explain Jiraiya said. I wasn't even trying to look at you naked this time I swear, I detest the very day when Sensei picked you up from the streets and made you my teammate. Sunade said, fuming with anger. Not even noticing the kids. The monkey made a mistake, and I will fix it. I find no other way Jiraiya said, going through hand signs like there was no tomorrow. Sunade already moved, but by then Jiraiya had finished his hand signs. Reverse summoning Jutsu. And with a poof, he was gone. Sunade's fist only met the wall, crushing it in the process. And not again. Every damn time. She grumbled before she looked at his sides. And who the heck are you brats? A respectable tree hampers. Abito said, before correcting himself. What was he Spider-Man, no he was Batman for God's sake. No, I mean, respectable shinobis from Konoha. You wouldn't possibly note Sunade looked at the Ichiha weirdly, and why are you here? On a mission, Kakashi said with his usual cold glare. Unlike you, we do follow the rules of the village somewhat, the Haddock didn't like Tsunade that much, mainly because of abandoning the village. Tsunade cracked her knuckles. And what are you trying to say, Gaki? Say it clearly, I'm not in a good mood right now. I'm not trying to say anything princess. Kakashi glared back. But unlike someone here, we are active shinobus. So don't just brush us off like that. Abito and Rin blinked. That was unexpected. Both the Senjus glared at each other, sparks flying midair. Well, both Senju cousins didn't go along so well then. Sunade snorted, the village will only get your loved ones killed if you aren't strong enough Brad. She said, and you clearly aren't. Why you Kakashi wanted to say something. But Sunade sama wait for me and with that, another beauty with black hair exited the hot spring, and it was Shizun. She was also quite the looker for a teenager, and of course, she was carrying her pet pig with her. TCH, brat fix that attitude of yours, or never mind. Sunade said, trying to wave him off. Or what are you going to do about it? Kakashi said in a challenging tone. While Akito barked at his side. Abito just sighed, Rin you might want to take a step back. Rin gulped, Kakashi was strong. But angering an already angry Sanin was no joke. So she took a step back and blinked when he saw what Abito was doing. Hey what are you doing she asked when she saw the Achea. Oh, these, I don't want the silver send you here hogging all the action. Abito of course was putting on his gloves, his eyes spinning red under his shades, a challenging grin on his face. And bit tits right here don't look that tough to me the last statement made Swan look at the Achea as well. Rin got a headache. His teammates were officially insane. Sigh I leave you guys for one minute, and you start a fight with a powerhouse like her. And it was Minato, Rin was so glad that he came by. Honestly you guys won't even stand a chance against her. And that hurt. Both for the Ichiha and the Haddock. Right in the pride. Hey, we won't know unless we try. Abito retorted while Kakashi vigorously nodded, not taking eyes off the Sanin. They had better luck milking a Bijuu rather than fighting against her, with their current abilities. Yet, they wanted to test it. Tsunade just breathed out, trying to calm herself down. I don't fight kids anyway. She said, turning around and going her way, she spoke. And Minato if you find your damn teacher, send him to me. I promise I will send him back to you in a body bag. Shizu nodded and gave them an apologetic look before following the blonde beauty. Minato winched and saw both of the women get back inside the hot spring house. Jiraiya sensei messed up didn't he? Abito just shrugged, who knows, but I really want to try out my fist against her. Me too Kakashi agreed. And that made Abito and the rest of the team blink. Kakashi never agreed with Abito, so this was a first. So Abito just sighed, now I will have to find a way to set a fight against her. You can. Kakashi raised an eyebrow. Don't underestimate the ghost of Ichiha, Abito said, puffing his chest a bit. It wouldn't be that hard, he just had to bet against her and things should fall into place. Just don't go peeking when she's half-naked in the bath. Minato's sweat dropped. That won't get you in a fight, but rather killed. What do you think I am? A toad summoner. Abito said as if pride was damaged. Hey, I'm also a toad summoner. But I'm not a pervert. Minato defended pointing at himself. You sure that Kashina didn't beat that side out of you? Abito tilted his head at that. Minato's eyes twitch, with your sharp tongue, I'm certain you will find a way to get a good beating from Tsunade. 
oh, you praise me too much, sensei. But then again, you won't be able to start any fights here, Minato said, taking out a piece of paper. We are immediately called back by the Hokage. So we will have to travel by night. And I would like to take my team back to the village uninjured. Abito groaned, why didn't you say that before? He said. And here I was getting excited for no reason. That old hag lives another day. Rin just shakes her head at the Ichiha's antics. Abito just smiled, but anyhow, let's get something to eat first. With that, they started to walk away from the hot springs, and when they were a bit far, and in front of a restaurant Abito spoke again. You can come out now, Abito said, his Sharingan lazily spinning. Minato gave a side glance, before chuckling and entering the restaurant. The Kashi and Rin gave him raised eyebrows. But the Haddock jumped up to a building roof when something no someone came out from his shadows. It was Jiraiya. Wait, when did you get inside my shadow? Kakashi pointed out. The Toad Sage just shrugged, I didn't use Reverse Summoned in the first place. He said. But you are a scary one, Ichiha brat. A very good sensor like Kagami-san himself, but then again you are taught by him he just smiled. Yes, and cool technique by the way, Abito said, turning off his Sharingan, and pushing his shades on in his eyes. Jiraiya raised an eyebrow. You can't seriously think you can copy my technique by looking at it once. He said, while Abito just smiled. Well, I don't need something like that. When I have a better version of that technique. Abito shrugged. But cool hiding technique nonetheless. Your technique is kinda similar to my earth ghost technique. But mine's even better. Oh, I forgot the part where you were in Ichiha. Jiraiya snorted, Ichiha pride and all. But anyway, let's get something to eat. With that, he pushed the restaurant door open. The Kashi got down and was a bit frustrated that he couldn't smell Jiraiya's chakra, who had been hiding in his shadows. Anyways, if we can't fight your teammate, can we fight you? Abito asked, as he followed him. We kinda want to test our skills. What? You guys want to challenge me? Jiraiya said in mock surprise. Challenge me after you can keep up with my student Minato. This sage here is quite busy. Abito raised an eyebrow. And you will accept it if we could. Nope. I have better things to do in the land of hot springs than to fight smelly brats. Jiraiya said. Shoo shoo go away. Abito sighed and shook his head. This journey wasn't as challenging as he had hoped. After the mission in the hot springs, Team Minato was back at the village. They didn't even stay the night there, after enjoying a bath and dinner they were out by night. They were ninjas, of course, they wouldn't have the luxury to wait for the morning journey. By the time the sun was rising, Team Minato was at the gates of Konoha. All three of the kids looked exhausted. Sure Kakashi and Abito were stamina beasts, but fighting a deadly battle while saving clients' lives, while having minimum rest, and then making the journey back in one run was quite taxing for them. Rin was a bit worse than them. But the girl came a long way in the one-month training. Cheer up kids, Minato said, as they finally entered the village. All the streets were empty, only a few shops were open at this hour. Our first C-rank mission was a success. But I think it's kinda A-rank with the amount of bullshit that happened in between. Let's report to the Hokage and you guys can go on your merry way. You know you could have just teleported us here with you Horatian, Abito grumbled. That way you would have saved more time. Minato just I smiled not answering. Now he kinda understood where Kakashi got his famous I smile from. Abito just sighed, accepting his fate, as Team Minato entered the Hokage Tower. The receptionist blinked seeing the team report so early. The mission is over. And back so early at that. She said, before shrugging. But then again, with the current state of things. It's not unusual you were called back so quick. Thanks Hana. Minato said while the receptionist stood up from his seat to go to the Hokage's office first. After some time she exited the room. Hokage-sama will see you now. Finally. Abito groaned. Thanks, beautiful lady. The lady smiled at the compliment while the team entered the room. And Hiruzen wasn't any better than Team Minato. The middle-aged man looked quite old and frail. And it was obvious that the huge stacks of paperwork were the reason. The third Hokage laid back on his chair as he lit his pipe. Taking a drag. It's a good thing that you are back, Minato. You have a few errands to run, but first, how did the mission go? Minato started explaining how the mission went along with the contribution of Team Minato. After carefully listing into the report, the Hokage just nodded. 
you three are dismissed. He said waving them off, before stopping them. After the kids were out of it, Hiruzen spoke again. How do you evaluate your team in ranking by strength? Minato rubbed his chin. Hum Kakashi Haddock is an exceptional chunin. And in this mission, he managed to eliminate one jonin and one of the traders of the hot spring village. His combat with his adamantium sword is quite unique with his lightning chakra mastery. Nothing eye-catching but he gets the job done quickly. In terms of strength, I would rank him around mid or low jonin. Hiruzen nodded. Bakashi was Tabarama's grandson, and so it wasn't that far-fetched that he would grow strength quicker. Minato continued. Rin Nahara might be a genin. And contributed the least in this mission. But her level-headed approach is quite good. She might be mid to low chunin in terms of strength, she mostly uses long-range jutsus, while her tojutsu is a bit lacking. Here is nodded again. Rin Nahara was from a branch clan of Saratobi, so she knew a few things about her. It seems to be with Ibido and Kakashi pushed her to move forward. Minato nodded. She still feels lacking in some departments due to his teammates overshadowing him. But she's improving here as in chuckled. She reminds me of Jiraiya. That boy was a troublemaker when he was my student. And his talent for shinobi arts was lacking compared to Arachimaru and Tsunade. But see him now, a sage and the best spymaster of Konoha. Some people just need time to grow, and it helps when your teammates are stronger than you. It either motivates you or you give up. Minato nodded again. She did improve quite a lot in the team training this recent month. Pirazin dragged his pipe, okay how about Ibido? Where do you put him as Minato hummed? Well, I'm unsure where to put him. He did contribute most to the mission. Killing nine Chunins and one of the traders having his clones guard his teammates while he was away and doing all that without getting a scratch. I would have ranked him mid Jonin, but the boy is overly protective of himself and his comrades sometimes. Always calculating dangers it's a good thing. But he could do a bit more with his strength if he loosens up a bit. And that concludes this episode. If you enjoyed it, I'd seriously love it if you guys could leave a like on the video as it genuinely helps out so much, and it keeps me going, plus it takes only one second. That said, have a wonderful day. See you in the next one.